I've been trying to not do this video for a while. Uh, in fact, I forgot it existed. Uh, and then I remembered it existed and figured, I suppose, I suppose we should watch the video finally. Um, it is just an absolute trash box. Um, I'm going to do it at a 1.25 speed because it's it's like it's so long um but this is john doyle's how we got to men buying babies together which i think is a shane dawson thing but is generally of course just going to be homophobia so i'm very i'm 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 interested uh haven't watched any doyle videos um people don't really i mean people kind of watch his videos but i don't know what other content he's doing he's on he's doing like some kind of like he he's in like a, a content community for for like right wing podcast dudes, I guess. He kind of does that circuit a little bit. I don't know how that. I guess they pay for those performances. <laughs> Sounds boring. <laughs> but then you love me. Uh, so he's he's doing he's doing his thing. All right, let's see it. How we got to men buying babies. YouTuber Shane Dawson and his partner have just received twin baby boys through surrogacy after having announced that they were going through the process several months ago. Yeah. I don't I don't care. Uh, I think Shane Dawson's a little sussy as a person to have children, but it, like holistically, I don't care. Surrogacy is fine. Of course, there was lots of excitement, lots of support in the replies to these announcements on social media, even despite Shane Dawson's, I will say, interesting history of comments about children, which we'll get into in a little bit here. But that mm -hmm. announcement came just a day or so after we saw another announcement, another case where you've got two men using surrogacy to purchase children for themselves, except this time the social media announcements were coming from Fox News contributor and Fox radio host Guy Benson. And curiously, there was lots of excitement from other conservatives who perhaps would have been really angry when it was Pete Buttigieg and the man he calls his husband doing this a little while. The man he calls his husband? <laughs> It's so sensitive, dude. <laughs> like, I don't give a fuck. How could I can't imagine caring about gay marriage? It's that's a twenty-year-old fucking debate at this point. Like, actually, it's not. It's like ten years from Obergefell v. Hodges. I I know that like they're coming after it, and the conservatives are um, actually a genuine threat to this situation. But like, I, just, I like what's your argument again? It's it's only Christian stuff. I just. It, it never makes any sense to me. You can marry who you want. I don't care. It's a fucking social contract. I actually don't care. It do, you don't even have to love your spouse. I don't give a shit. You don't have to like your spouse. You can do it for tax reasons. You can do it for fucking fun. Um, Willy-nilly. I don't give a shit. Uh, your decisions. Don't care. A while ago, purchasing children from surrogates, doing a little photo shoot afterwards in a hospital bed and everything. But even a year or so ago, you know, when Dave Rubin announced that he was doing the same thing, we saw lots of support from conservatives for the results of gay men purchasing children together through surrogacy. And for those unfamiliar with surrogacy, it's where a woman... <laughs> he, li he likes to use the words purchase because um, the only reason that that is, like, really the case is that we have, like, a capitalist system, right? <laughs> like... You you could expect some kind of compensation in a system where we had health care, I guess, for a uh, a surrogate. But the, the service, nonetheless, I think would still maintain. A lot of people do it for their friends and family. You know, uh, some people do it for money. Um, it is quite lucrative if you got a bit a nice a nice womb and you want to uh, uh, go through. It. In fact, I watched. Um, you guys seen Dead Ringers the movie? Uh, they made a TV show on Prime with Rachel Weisz and. Um, uh, surrogacy is a topic uh, that comes up there. Um, the problems with surrogacy all revolve around capitalism and the elite and the way that they decide to go about having families um, and not really, um, you know, uh, two men wanting a child together or two women or whatever. Although one of them sometimes carries it. And carries a child through IVF for a couple who will then take the child from her upon birth and raise him on their own. It's been take the child from her. She so surrogate surrogates can have can be like okay, actually this child's mine. Um, up uh, like I don't I don't know I don't know when that runs out, but like there's a period of time when they have an option to actually just be like, well, this is actually is mine. It's my baby because it's in my fucking body. Um, there's like. These are talked about. Like these are adults making decisions over things. Most people, you know, these have lots of money. They're like, you, you know, this is a vetted process. <laughs> I don't, I don't like boutique baby shit either. But like, I mean, 
<laughs> I think I think that's a capitalism problem. This wouldn't happen in the commune, man. This is your system. What are you mad about? <laughs> you're you're just you're you're mad that there's these medical markets for these things, and so he uses the word purchase like an evil word. Happening for a while, female celebrities have been doing this, literally renting another woman's womb to carry a child and then parading him around afterwards like an accessory as if everything is just totally normal. But there's also been this trend that's increasingly popular of gay men using surrogates as well. And even more recently, a trend of conservatives celebrating this so long as they vote Republican because we love family values. We love the family unit and present fathers. We love present fathers in the household so much. So it's so interesting because I think what this does is splinters the right. And that's awesome. Uh, and also I think that this, like the normalization of gay couples having babies, even in right wing spaces is a hilarious L for someone like John Doyle to take. <laughs> and he's, he's trying to fight this ultra conservative fight and like, it just keeps failing because people just want to live their fucking lives and that's always how it's going to be. And this will always be our struggle. People wanting to genuinely live their lives and other people trying to keep them from doing so. That's ex essentially our struggle at every step. And then depending on the groups you're in, you're, you're more or less oppressed. That we're doubling it. We are we are solving the fatherlessness problem by doubling the fathers in the household. I, as a conservative, support households with two dads, as long as they vote Republican. That's family values. That's the family unit. You know, we can just play creative mode of what those words actually mean, and you just keep saying it, and that's the plan. Okay? So we will go over surrogacy and the horrors of it, why it's wrong, the negative effects that we see in children. The horror of all varieties of non-nuclear households and families, some statistics about growing up in these kinds of households, some analysis of the slippery slope, the effects that these LGBT conservative figures have on the broader movement. I love calling um, anything a YouTuber does analysis. I could never I could never consider what I do analysis. Shut up. <laughs> Just shut up. You're not doing analysis, bro. Some interesting dynamics with conservative media companies. How we got to this point in the first place where conservatives are like, yeah, well, at least our gay dads who purchase made-to-order babies are going to vote Republican. Uh, why the current discourse is incapable of actually pushing back against these issues. Mm -hmm. Some uncomfortable truths about these things that may help with that. Why this is actually more subversive than this. And so much more. Uh, so do me a favor. Go ahead and stay tuned. Oh, he still has the same fucking intro where he marries Hello his there, sister. Ladies and John Doyle. Yeah. He's marrying his sister. Heck off, Tommy. Why are you doing that? Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Heck Off Kami. Before we get started, I request the input of the audience. I have planned another dissertation-length video covering so many important topics. It began originally with a summary of my Twitter beef with Vivek Ramaswamy and how I was responsible for outing him as a pro-mass immigration globalist last January. Trust. I will elaborate, I promise. And it's expanded since into this very thorough, very long, very important discussion on everything from immigration policy to political... It's so... <laughs> My discussion is very important. <laughs> Man, there's some like delusions of grandeur involved with being a right wing content creator. Political strategy to then Israel Palestine, trends in elections, voting patterns, historic understanding of American identity, all sorts of stuff. But it all fits under one very important umbrella. And I'm very excited about it. I think we're going to learn a lot. So I'm leaning towards just putting it out as one final giant video for the beginning of next year. And then we have a couple more big announcements right around the corner. Uh, but this is going to be broken up into three parts. And it's going to play one after the other because I think breaking it up into segments not only. I love that John Doyle pretends to be a big, uh, like, confident guy. But he blocked me after we talked. <laughs> He got fucking rolled, and he fucking blocked me. <laughs> he kept getting dunked on by everybody, and he and he and he just that's it. After our talk, not for something on Twitter. So stupid. Conservatives are supposed to appear in public with bed hair. Yeah, he's just he's a, he's a fluffy guy. He helps organize it in my mind, but also in the mind of the viewer. So my question is: You actually want me to post it like part one, part two, part three, or do you want another big video? This is you awful. Just, you know, back again before the end of the year. One of our cool. guys in the HOC did. Cool. spiritual and physical fitness muscular christianity of course being in reference to the christian athletic movements from the 19th century in england and the united states i remember when i first got sent the pdf i immediately sent it to other people probably illegally because i thought it was important okay you know it comes with a workout program and everything but essentially it explains why we have to view a person not as just body and mind the way the modern world does not just as mind and spirit the way frankly a lot of christians do but in a proper sense which includes the links between the body the mind and the spirit and how strength and all of these are required for you to flourish and so check that out i'll put a link to it in the description a little stocking stuffer for you maybe but What a shill, bro. What a fucking gross loser. Ugh. 
Yeah, I distinctly remember seeing a magazine at Kroger when I was but a boy. I don't care, like, That's Jesus. crazy. Look, and therefore, how is this stuff. a video? But they're presenting it far more consistently and far more disturbing a manner, and it's being presented unironically, as if it's just we get okay, a let's freak show or something. Like, I think it was just like oh, I don't think to, it was go pregnant. Beginning. It said like first pregnant man or something. And I was like, wow, that's crazy. Looking back though. I don't think the magazine was trying to claim that a woman became pregnant, but because she identifies as a man, therefore a man is pregnant. I think it was just like clickbait. It was like, oh, wow, freak science. Check this out. Like a sideshow attraction at a carnival, a freak show or something. Like, come one, come all. First pregnant man. You know, like one of those things. But now it's just totally normal. Still got women getting pregnant, but they're presenting it far more consistently and far more disturbing a manner. And it's being presented unironically as if it's just true, uncontroversial, pregnant men, pregnant people, whatever. So we've got. Yeah, man. Yeah. It's pregnant men. What? <laughs> I still, I, I still don't understand it, man. <clears throat> that, like, there's like no argument against this. You're just like, yeah, look, I'm a pregnant man. What, you, uh, would you look at it? You know? Got that going for us. And now it's reached a point where there's so much going on. If you say, oh, these men say they're pregnant. People on our side are like, whoa, 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 whoa hold on. Uh, you're saying uh, that that woman thinks she's a man and is pregnant. Oh, well, excuse me. No, allow me to clarify what I meant. These two men have purchased a child and ordered a child from his mother, whom they will raise as their own. He will never be able to meet his mother nor understand her love and warmth. And That's not necessarily true. Surrogates some like sometimes and or often have relationships with uh, kids that they've you know surrogated into the world. Um, it wouldn't be abnormal to have a relationship with your surrogate mother nurturance despite the gap that will be left by the absence of all that oh well that's different then like there's this dynamic it's on not the right different way. a lot of times they're family members because like you know a lot of straight couples get surrogacy this is a to this has been a thing for a long time this is like being opposed to adoption and like saying that like an adopted kid can't call their adopted parents mom and dad or something this is this is me i mean it's literally adoption i don't know why you're upset he's against that too i, I have no clue then Open adoption is a common thing. Yeah. This is not different, man. This is super easy to get. Where social conservatism means being anti-trans. That's it. And that's sometimes, mostly it's being anti-trans people who vote Democrat or anti-trans surgeries, but only for minors. But on your 18th birthday, hell yes, son. You come back home with a shotgun and with no penis. It's, it's the Yellowstone meme, you know? Shoot, boy, you're 18 now. Just run up to the party store and get some fireworks. We can just do it right there in that there backyard. Some bitch already got me paying out the nose for them hormones. I'll blow the damn thing off myself. Or you've also got people who are like, well, I have no issue. Yeah, I, I don't know how you're against the, the like, fundamental freedom to express yourself how you want. Like, it's literally, you can do whatever you want. You can wear whatever you want. You can talk however you'd like. Your hair can be whatever color you'd like it. Yeah, I don't give a fuck. Wow. First Amendment, bitch. I've never watched Yellowstone. With the LGB, it's really just the T. That's like a common line now. There's no coherency to anything these people believe. No concept of the slippery slope. No understanding of the enemies that they're up against. And I'm the first guy, by the way, to criticize how the right has responded to the gender issue, which is by yelling, stop erasing women. Women have vaginas. Hey, you motherfucker, I'm a fucking woman. I'm a fucking woman with a fucking vagina, bitch. I will, I will fucking kill you with my pink girl AR-15 if you ever try to take my daughter's soccer trophy, you fucking bitch. Who's he ranting against? Okay, like this is what they then celebrate though. Like the gender conversation isn't actually about wild, simple biology. Man. The left is right about that. It's about the essence of gender. So yes, of course it's biological, but what is implied by that biology? How do men and women tend to behave? What do the It's not about biology, man. Why are you a biological determinist? You're a Christian. You don't even believe in biology unless it serves your religion. Like does this guy believe in evolution? Or do you believe in creationism? Those implications and tendencies mean for society. Like, this is the conversation that's being had. And the right loses because too many of us don't like that conversation. Because while we may agree that, yeah, there are some differences between men and women, we ultimately agree with the left's conclusion, at least more, more so than a serious alternative to it. Which is why you get so many, well, I'm a liberal, but the left has just gone too far. Those types of people washing up on our shores. So, yeah, our counter to this has been this very vulgar, hey, women don't have balls. Which, frankly, is not a very ladylike response. But the whole point of that rhetoric is that you can't erase being a woman because women have vaginas. And that's important because women use those to make babies. But then you can't celebrate these kinds of things because if two men can raise a baby which was born from a woman's body just like a man and a woman can raise that baby then it really doesn't matter who has what part because everything is just interchangeable you know women he's so close here like diagnosing his own the his the struggle within the right-wing spaces to grapple with well can gay guys exist yes if so can they have families sure is surrogacy fine yes well, then that doesn't really, you know, then 
that makes the family unit argument fall apart. Yep. That makes yes, I agree with you, John. That you're that's not tenable to be conservative. You know, like how how can you have this open conversation with yourself and like really go down all the paths here and think about it? And he's like, well, I mean, that would mean this. And it's like, yes, it would, John. That's correct. It really doesn't matter what kind of fucking genitals you have. True, John. So close, bud. He literally is saying this. He's like, well, then it just wouldn't matter. But I'm a biological essentialist for some reason that doesn't really make sense or jive with my religion. <laughs> Women have no unique value except for their vaginas. They'd be like, oh, I've got milk. You've got chocolate syrup. You know, let's make Women don't have unique value outside of their vaginas? John, you're telling on yourself that's true, right? You're like... You're, you're saying that women only have unique value in that they can give birth. It's crazy. Uh, Newsflash. Um, you don't have to give birth to be a woman with value. What? It's crazy, too. You also don't have to have a pussy. But I would, I, like, would be, I'd be fine... If you did, I'm very brave. Jake, fine with ladies with pussies. God. Make something happen here. No further insight into why you have milk and not chocolate syrup or vice versa. Just like, oh, yeah, it is what it is. Who cares? Doesn't really matter. And if it doesn't matter, why get upset about it? You know, it's just like who has what body parts? Then, yeah, it's all just physical. It's all just physical matter. Who really cares? It's right. no consequence. Correct. And that's why they're mad at the trans stuff. But then they'll celebrate gay couples using surrogates to acquire babies. And, oh, gee, yes, I'm so happy for you guys. So much this. And it's because of that thinking. They actually agree with the left, which is why the outcomes always gravitate towards the left. They more or less agree that being born a man or being born a woman has no real implication for your life. For your Yes. Yes, John. You're getting it. That's correct. Your lifestyle, behaviors, choices, interests, yeah. temperament, intelligence, ambitions. Temperament, my, uh, just nothing. Ugh, listen to yourself. You're saying, what about their personalities and what they want in life? And trans people are like, this is what I want in life and this is my personality. And you're like, no, it's not. Listen to yourself. <laughs> He's so stupid. And he, it's, it's literally just clouded by this presuppositional position he has to take as a right-wing Christian man. He has to make presuppositions that the world has to fit, which is why an otherwise, I think, intelligent man, I think John Doyle isn't like, he's not the quartering, you know what I mean? This kid can think he just, he just has, he's, he's working on the wrong math problem because he's so fucking dumb and cocksure. He's literally never analyzed this part of himself. He's he's never one time asked himself, why am I conservative? He has always said, I'm conservative because. Man. No, I don't think he's stupid. I actually don't think he's stupid. I think he's nefarious. John Doyle is deeply nefarious. One day he's going to do it and realize he's gay. I don't know if he's gay or not, but he's definitely, I mean, this is, this is a bag of shit argument. <laughs> this is, this is one of the worst segments he's ever done because he, he, he literally is knocking on the door of his own ignorance on this. He's literally talking about the thing he's getting wrong in this video, but he can't, he can't see it. Which I don't think is stupidity. I mean, I really, I really think like he, <clears throat> he is doing a thing that you only do if you if you can think it out, right? He is thinking about the thing that another person might say to what he's saying, but he doesn't. He's 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 rejecting the validity of that counter argument at at out front without considering it. That's the that's the rub because c considering that argument is wholly rejected by his worldview, which he puts primacy over logic. But I think I think if he ever had an atheist awakening, he would be powerful. Genuinely. Cognitive dissonance. Well yeah, exactly. Of, of course it is. But he's just a shit fuck instead. He's just a shitty person. <laughs> I think he'd still be cringe though. 
Um, I, I, there's something about him that wants to act out and be like, I mean, he was bullied in school. I actually have on good, good authority that he got bullied in school. Uh, I live in Michigan. Some people have messaged me over the years like, Hey, I went to school with this guy. He was fucking, you know, he was a subway sandwich artist and nobody liked him, (laughs) you know? Anyway. Other than what society might impose upon you. And if they do, it's not significant enough to really explain the gaps that we're tending to see between uh, men and women, explaining the results of feminism, sex segregated environments uh, being abolished, et cetera. Like effectively, since all of them are liberals, the only difference is they want to acknowledge that men and women have different genitalia because thinking otherwise would be crazy, right? Two men can raise a kid, but they can't make one. But if they pay me, I'll, I'll do it for them. And then it's a private transaction that the status better not interfere with. You gentlemen can hire me for my vagina, but you better fucking acknowledge that it's a vagina. And that makes me a fucking woman. So that's kind of like where we're at. Uh, so, yeah. Anyways, broadly speaking, establishment right, adjacent establishment right, all the... It's interesting that he's sort of making fun of the guy or gal that is saying that vaginas are what make me a woman in that. Even though he, he tends to agree with that argument, right? Like, that's he's that's where he's at with, with the trans issue, is that if you have a vagina, you're a lady, right? The usual suspects, all their fans, they're all okay with these kinds of things. Nobody likes them now either. I mean, really, I agree, but, like, you know. Uh, when you get out of high school and you were bullied, um, there's a lot of these guys that, like, you know, they, they overcorrect in adulthood and they just try to do the same thing. But if you're not, it's because you're homophobic or something. Even though forever we've had to hear about the family unit, the nuclear family, Mm -hmm. family values, sound of freedom, human trafficking. Okay, well, what is this then? You know, like, what would you call this? Ordering and purchasing a human being? Adoption is what I call it. What would that be then? You know, with adoption, you've got couples paying money to agencies, and it's going through this. Oh, to agencies. You're... the bureaucracy is what makes adoption better to you? Big bureaucracy and background checks and meetings and check-ins. Literally. Different agencies and supervision and training. But you can't just like straight up pay the parents for the child because that would be trafficking. That's illegal. This isn't trafficking. This is overseen. But with this, yeah, all the money goes to the genetic mother, genetic father, the birthing mother, some combination. It's all just wrong using those modifiers on mother and father. It's literally like an order and a transaction for a human being. Like even... You can't be okay with adoption because it has more bureaucracy. That's just, I don't understand why that makes sense to you. How authoritarian are you, man? Small state John feeling it. Like, I don't understand that. Like, why do you want that apparatus? Why is that more appealing to you? That doesn't make any sense relative to your other worldviews, unless suddenly he's like, I actually don't like a lot of freedoms. I like I like government oversight. Well, I like government oversight in this particular case. Can the ladies have free health care then? Do you think we could have free health care? Well, no. Well, wouldn't that be government oversight? Well, no, I want that to be have private oversight. Why? <laughs> you know, I don't understand. Like, how, how does this make sense? It's so interesting how you pick and choose your ethic on this. Uh, it just seems to be uh, like a whim. Even when we focus on the culture war stuff, we can't even do it properly. It's such an absurd environment on the right where we're screaming about how men and women are different. We must defend the family. Okay, well, what is the implication of men and women being different? Like, why do you, why do you shy away from that part? What is the extent of those differences? Can that inform our understanding of maybe the world that we live in today? If we understand men and women, understand marriage, understand the role of marriage, how all of these things are linked, there's nowhere in the system where you would accept a concession on these types of things. It's all just one sealed system. Because if two men can get married, meaning the union isn't really t- complementary, it's just a partnership. It's like an agreement. Okay, well, why? Two men can be complementary to one another. What? You've never had a real relationship in your life, man. How? How is this like this? That's absolutely true. That you can have a complementary male friend and or romantic partner, dude. <laughs> I don't know. John's protesting a lot that he's against gay people all the time. This seems to be particularly his issue. Maybe chat's right. Chat was chat was making some some little gay twink accusations and, you know, 
man. It kind of does have when Ben Shapiro looks at like gender queer twinks on TikTok and and has that little dimple in his cheek smiling at him, a little twinkle in his eye. I mean, he kind of does have a similar vibe here. Huh. All right. Uh consider consider John under investigation. Why can't they raise kids then? And if they can raise kids, well, why can't they order them? Do you think surrogate? he's a gold star like heterosexual London? like me? I don't know. Probably only for lack of ability to uh, get the boy bitches, you know. This is just a partnership. What do you call? It? What like, is wrong with salami? No bitches, but what is it when it's guys? Still bitches. Will less will lesbians be brought up at all in this video, or only? Uh, men probably only men but i mean maybe maybe some lip service to like lesbians he doesn't like probably trans lesbians even go it's crazy all these men condition in box dick incels always had the hardest opinions on straight relationships no butches well now that implies yeah that's different but i like i, I don't hate it So it's kind of shitty when it said that all the people that care enough about men to be homophobic must be gay. Um, I don't know. It's just it's just his particular take on this. Not that he's homophobic. Um, it's the way he's it's the way he is on this topic every time he brings it up that is starting to make me think, man, this is a this is a particular topic of interest because this happens a lot. Um, this projection sort of thing where they're like, no, it's actually bad. I'm I'm a sinner. This is a sin. Um, you know, it's an a it's a choice. You're acting on this impulse. We shouldn't allow it. Meaning, in implying that he is suppressing an impulse because he assumes that other people have this impulse. And I can tell you, uh, as a gold star, straight, um, I've only ever been uh, attracted to feminine presenting individuals, uh, even if they actually had a dick or something, right? Like, but like feminine femininity is what's attractive to me. Um, you know, not like, not John, right? In his big masculine energy here. Very alpha. So, yeah. I mean, it's also otter coded. What's otter coding? <laughs> I maybe. Is this a Ryan Furry stuff? You and your best friend, or is it something deeper? Is it something that we maybe don't even fully understand? This is the end result of social liberalism in the slippery slope. Humans are all blank slates, completely interchangeable, and therefore they can be commodified. Since the family unit has been completely abolished, total and full surrogacy, no one's related to anybody fully. We're all just mass floating around in our little commune. And further, not only do they not what really commune, dude, really acknowledge the differences between men and women, but by extension, they don't care to acknowledge perhaps the differences between an otter is a hairy twink. Oh, okay between a heterosexual relationship and a homosexual relationship. And I know that we've discussed this before, the differences between those relationships. Uh, right now, this is just going to be more zoomed in. It's going to be a more zoomed in discussion as opposed to a broader conversation about the whole movement, history, etc. I've got it all up here, the homophobic dissertation. I just have to put it together into a nice presentation for the wonderful audience, probably on the website, maybe during Pride Month. But yeah, I mean, if the differences aren't... <laughs> Dude, he's already planning his next homophobia for Pride Month. God. You see what I'm saying, man? He's got a whole dissertation on this subject. And he's going to put out multi-part videos during Pride Month. He's thinking about it. He's stewing over Pride Month six months in advance. Well, seven months at the time of the filming. The allegations... Uh, I don't think that's what it does, Void Bold. I think, I mean, if, if someone was saying that every homophobe was a closet homosexual, then yeah, I think I'd agree. Um, but I don't think that. I think, I feel like, I feel like that's sometimes cope, but yeah. There's definitely just regular hateful fucking losers that are het and just hate gay people, yeah. I think Doyle and Dave, though, for sure. I would be. I mean, Dave especially. <laughs> 
significant, then the relationships and how they affect children can't be that different, right? I mean, it's just about anatomy, not even biology. They say biology. What they really mean is anatomy. God, he just wants this to be so true, though. So I don't, I mean, this is just, he's been clamoring about this specific issue for a long time. Specifically. Then, yeah, like who cares? It's all ultimately interchangeable. And most conservatives would agree that the family <coughs> unit is the backbone of society. Okay, that's pretty good. But if you're going to talk about family structure, then you actually have I disagree. The backbone of society is not the family unit. The backbone of the society is the community, which is often family. Whatever, but it, it doesn't mean that like just your blood relatives, like, which is why I would use the word community. Like, it's about your fucking group, whoever the whoever the people are in your life that you consider your close ones, friends and family. Um, way more important than just your immediate blood relatives. Um, the reason you're having a problem with your specific family unit hopes is because uh, capitalism has um, destroyed that possibility for a lot of people and made it quite hard. You have to be like upper middle class to get to this point, right? Like literally I see upper middle class when I look at this. And also we just don't live like this anymore, man. Like, it's a more casual vibe. Chill. You can wear little suits, though. They have to talk about family structure. You know, we like to broadly measure that by, like, fathers present per capita or whatever. But this has been going on for a while. Obviously, divorce is totally normalized. Getting remarried sometimes even multiple times. Having step-parents, step-siblings. All of these things are totally normalized now. And so it really... Yeah, man. It really shouldn't come as a surprise to us that what is actually defining a family is becoming more subjective and experimental. But what we do know is that the farther uh -huh. that we get away from the nuclear family model, uh, you know, mom, dad, married with kids, the worse things get for everybody. I mean, virtually every metric. <laughs> no, this is correlation, not causation, and that should be very easy to see. <laughs> okay. The, the, these These... Things that you're arguing about are diverging along with the proliferation of capitalism as the people fight against their oppression to be uh, not um, under, you know, the hegemony of the ruling white cis normative uh, structure. I'm very woke, as you can tell. Um, but, like, that's true. All the things I said were true. <laughs> like, this is This is what it is, man. Like... Uh, you saying that this is what normal families look like when, you know, not every family and not even most families look like this. You know, this is just like some kind of ideal from a Hallmark channel or something quite white and delightsome. You know what I mean? Like if you want to live like this, totally fine. But you trying to make sure that everybody else lives like this is just ass. It's just total ass. I don't want to live like this. Okay. I want some pets and um, also a dog and a cat or two. You feel me? for evaluating the well-being of adults and children points to this. And of course, that's not every case, but statistically that is what we tend to see. You know, you start bringing people into these houses that aren't blood relatives, you start adding and subtracting parents like you're playing with Legos or something, rates mm -hmm. of abuse, mental illness, poor lifelong outcomes, et cetera, all of that goes up dramatically. That goes up dramatically due to the financial stress of the situation, okay? And the lack of uh, the lack of resources for communities in regards to these things, especially women's ability over time to get away from abusers like really in the last 10 15 years we've been having a decent conversation about women's rights and really only last five years honestly has it gotten where i think like the women's message is getting out better um and like there's a there's a shift in society that moves away from the power being centralized in men toward it being more dispersed among just whoever the fuck because we're all we're all different right there's no reason that it needs to be centralized with people that look like me unless we're qualified for the job you feel me similar argument for like how you you know don't just don't just put the black guy in the in the, in the movie because he's a black guy get make sure he's the right guy for the job right john uh, same diff here. I just put the white guy in charge because he's a white guy, you know, which is what you're arguing for when you say don't hire the black guy, by the way. That's <laughs> what you're arguing for. You're saying, well, actually, just keep the white guy, even if, whether he's qualified or not which we'll get to in a second. But essentially, yeah, I'm against all of that. I'm against anything that seeks to promote or normalize the deconstruction or the disintegration of the nuclear family. Now, 
Okay, John, not everybody is going to have a nuclear family. You can have a nuclear family. Um, this is a strange ideal to hold on to, and it really is not based in any sort of science or anything. There is no reason that you need a nuclear family. There's not even a biological certainty that you'll have a nuclear family. Um, in fact, I think, wouldn't you be for more than a u nuclear family, more than two kids? Because that's just sustaining population, right? That you want way more than that or something like that. Um, he will never have a nuclear family. I mean, it's just not, it's not tenable for you to argue that everybody has to have a nuclear family, John. It's pretty obvious that that's not even what most people want. How can you, how can you try to even force that? You can make personal suggestions like, hey, this is, you can write a self-help book. Hey, pursuing a nuclear family, these are the things that me and my successful nuclear family have experienced. Oh, wait, you are, you are a man who has not achieved this thing. Strange, strange that this keeps happening on the right. Where they just, they don't, they don't have these things. And when they do have them, they lose them or they abuse them. Now, the reason that these particular stories are causing such a controversy and why they're leading to more... Meanwhile, um, surrogacy and stuff, uh, adoption has a lot of problems, often due to capitalism and the bureaucracy involved and the systemic abuse uh, that that system grew up in. Um, but these come from high-income people who desperately want kids... Uh, Almost all of these are success stories in parenting. Like these are these are coming from deeply stable, often top like fucking ten percenters. I mean, what? <laughs> How can you be upset about this just because they're two dudes? Like that's crazy. <laughs> discussions of surrogacy as a whole is because people are seeing these stories and they're having a very negative gut reaction to them. And like with a lot mm -hmm. of things in America, people. His nipple isn't in the fucking picture. I don't like Shane Dawson. Don't make me defend Shane Dawson. His nipple isn't... It's clearly not fucking here. This is this is just... It's made to imply that he's breastfeeding, and he's not. It's just skin-to-skin -skin contact, you freaks. Literally, you did this. You know what I mean? Like, this is your fucking sick head doing this. You're like, what if that baby was sucking on a nipple? You freak. Like, you're the freak for implying that. This isn't the picture. Shane Dawson sucks, but now you make me defend him in this quite innocent picture because you're a freak thinking about babies sucking on titties. I... <laughs> How is this in own? have been stripped of the tools to properly articulate these gut feelings and to diagnose the problems that they see right in front of them, but they still retain that understanding that, okay, something's not quite right here. And believe it or not, it's actually okay for the gut reaction to be like pretty much the core of your argument, or at least the core of what justifies your actions. And with people who don't agree, you have to wonder why they don't also have that gut reaction to these kinds of stories. Maybe they even express a strong desire in the opposite direction. Maybe there's even something biological happening there that we'll reserve for a later time. I don't know. But regardless, your gut's uh, going to tell you the whole story because contained in jacketing. that reaction is a timeless connection to knowledge. And he, now, he, now he's projecting saying, why do they think about this so much? The thing that I keep bringing up. Instinct, <laughs> what is good, what is not. So it really doesn't matter if modern society has paid some like really smart person to tell you why this is good, actually. And it's not good. Uh, it's not good. Why it's good, actually. Kids raised by same-sex parents fare same as or better than kids of straight couples research finds. But actually, it's not good, John says. That's why it was only on screen for under it's five not, seconds. It really doesn't matter if modern society has paid some like really smart person to tell you why this is good, one, actually. And it's two, not good. And this is important uh, to talk one about. One and a half, two seconds? These wow. Trends are just going to continue. It's going to affect the future going forward. 1.75 speed? That'd be too fast, dude. Or because the only two issues that really matter right now are immigration and health. And Maybe not. The reason for that is very simply that civilization is going to be defined by the people in it. Whether those people are your people or not your people, whether those people are doing well physically, spiritually, and mentally. Uh, of course, these are all connected. And so in a real sense, this issue is kind of a combination of those two issues insofar as we're concerned about the well-being and stability of future generations because we're concerned about where these people are coming from, uh, which does include a conversation about family structure, which is important, and if these people are doing well, which does include a conversation about the conditions which are most conducive to people's well-being, generally speaking, almost absolutely speaking. And now I the conducive to people's well-being would be access to health care, taking care, like having free and quality housing uh 
ha- with the ability to move out of that uh, free housing onto you could have your you know you could you could have your suburbs and and your your property ownership as an aspiration but everyone should have minimum quality living spaces uh, education etc like that would literally lead to thriving i think he's so smart it hurts yeah i hate capitalism but i might as well be a functional syndicalist because we'll never get to the fucking commune at this, you know <laughs> Isn't that what it would be? A syndicalist? It's a so- we're so- we're socialists. We're trying desperately to socialize as much as we can. <laughs> God damn it. Uh, sounds like a Twilight Zone episode. Put them a thousand, ten thousand speed. We free free of the pest in a month or so. Damn. All right, let's try one five. I know that I'm going to be called hateful and whatever. That's fine. It's not true, but that's okay. Like, I understand that's what the haters and losers were born to do. They're just going to see it on the internet. But I say that because I know that there are people who typically enjoy the content who might find some of this offensive, be inclined to infer that my motivation behind these positions is something other than what it is. All of those reasons, by the way, are very clearly articulated here if you just watch all the way through. So to write it off is just like a rational hatred or fear or even religious fanaticism. That would just be dishonest. Tempting as a man. <laughs> oh, someone else has religious fanaticism, not John Doyle. You can trust him. Maybe. So we got a lot to get into. But first, let's just go over what surrogacy is. For those unfamiliar, essentially, it's an enforceable legal agreement that's made between a woman and another party, whether that's a person, a married couple, a gay couple, whomever, to carry a child for them. And then upon delivering that child, she will receive payment in exchange for the child. Modern surrogacy, the way it's done now, it's only a few decades old. And there are a lot of things wrong with that that probably go beyond the scope of this discussion. Very Frankenstein-like, treating humans like commodities. You know, slavery is one thing. Like, that's obviously wrong. But, like, it makes sense. Like Treating humans like commodities? What, John? You don't... What? You're opposed to commodification of humans. Well, do I have something to tell you about the capitalist system, my friend? I understand the idea behind capturing rival men and making them into your slaves. That's been going on forever. But literally ordering babies like you'd order a new car, you know. He understand. Of course, the virtue of sl- enslaving other men, obviously. Yeah. Okay. Cool. John Doyle endorses slavery offhandedly. That's not even the point of this video. He's just he's just like, hey, by the way, little tidbit, drop the bucket. Pro-slavery. Let's go. Moving on. You go into the interface and configure it just the way you want it. That's very new. I don't understand that. That's like that's a man-made horror beyond my comprehension. And that's why these people love it too. They love playing God. They love that sense of power or empowerment. Speaking of empowerment, there may be a time and a place where you, as an American patriot, are put into a self-defense situation. Oh my fucking god, he's already at a fucking ad read. How long is this ad read? It's still going. Two minutes. You're wrong with it because, of course, we have an offer code with iTarget. That's the letter I, targetpro.com, right, itargetpro.com. Of course, we have a lot of internalized feminism on our side. And surrogacy is, by the way, just feminism, which we will get into. Uh, but they maybe it's, like it because they Surrogacy themselves. is feminism. How long is this video? Too long, but we're, we're, we're going to cut it in, in half. You guys can interrupt whenever you like, but, well, actually, I don't think you can yet. Uh, you guys uh, blew your wide soon, but, yeah, I mean want to do it for whatever reason maybe they can't have a child naturally and i get that like i can only imagine that sense of dread you know you plan to have a family you find out that you can't naturally you're desperate for any option that's- dude honestly anytime we have an ad read is a w because we get to skip two minutes hey available to you i understand that i mean there are going to be people even in the audience who have had children this way and it may touch a nerve with them especially with the women so i'm not saying that i don't get it but we still have to have an honest conversation about it so typically surrogacy involves a process called in vitro fertilization ivf the making of test tube babies in a lab and oh no not a test tube baby we wouldn't we wouldn't want to inject eggs with sperm in that process, only about 7% of the lives created end up being born alive. So for every 100 lives that are created, only 7 about end up being born alive. And the rest die either because they don't survive the process. Parents wanted specifically this gender, so they throw the rejects in the trash, etc. Like Paris Hilton had like 20 guys, 20 boys, frozen in storage because she wanted a girl. The NSYNC guy, Lance, went through like a, several dozen embryos with all of his surrogacy attempts. They're, they're, they're cum-filled embryos, man. They're like cum, cum eggs. <laughs> they're not like actually growing, dude. They're in... You're nuts. Like, how do you think that a sperm cell touching an egg creates a soul? How are you like this? You think once a sperm cell touches an egg, that soul, soul things happen? That's a, that's a little baby now? How? Why are you like this, man? This is just religious. 
I know he's openly religious, but I don't know how you can justify, like, <laughs> religious people are weird. This is the problem, by the way. Back on my bullshit, surprise. He doesn't have these positions without religion, and neither would any of your other right-wingers. They wouldn't have him without religion. Sargon, atheist, wouldn't have his positions without a, the religious positions he's adopted. Just saying. I'm right. Seethe. And this is what ends up happening. Like, people want to be okay with it because they want to have a family, but it ends up just being a vehicle for celebrities and gay people who are trying to mix and match their perfect little designer families upon a mound of dead children. So, in a moment... A mound of dead children. ...with of desperation, a lot of people will support this. But, of course, what follows is something very sinister. Uh, John, go pull some heists and get the embryos from Lance Bass's sperm bank and and free them. Of course, shouldn't you be rioting outside those labs? Aren't you fucking freaking out right now? Because you're so... God, you just feel like they're really actually human babies and you have, you have a big emotional attachment? How do you feel about Palestine, by the way, getting bombed? <laughs> How do you feel about those? No? Hmm. Those are different. Once the babies are alive, totally different. Smart. Once the babies are babies... And can feel pain and suffering. No, I don't care if they feel pain and suffering. Very interesting. You're an abominable. Did you learn nothing from Pet Cemetery? So there are a lot of arguments to be made. Really what it boils down to, I you think... You should be forced to adopt all 20 of Lance Bass's rejected babies. You should be forced. By, by the United States government. Every one of them looking like Lance Bass is if you're trying to play around with powers that you shouldn't have access to, bad things are going to end up happening. Like, the question, I suppose, is how many embryos had to be killed to bring you your child? Where is your personal line of decency with that? Like, how many do you believe were justified? And how does that make you feel about your life and your family? Like, ultimately, that's on you. That's between you and God. I just have an obligation to speak out against what is that's wrong. Not I don't real. shoot the messenger. I don't want your emails. Uh, and we mentioned this earlier. Issues with non-nuclear family structures. Not real, dude. Not real, m'lady. And so people will say, well, what's wrong with surrogacy uh, and then not adoption? Why is one better than the other? And the answer to that is that there are cases where adoption is necessary, obviously. Cases aren't ideal, but they do happen. There are no cases where it is necessary to order a baby like he is a commission. You know, if a child is adopted, adoptive parents are there to support that child, make him feel safe and loved. With surrogacy, the parents are the ones who caused that deracination. How can they possibly understand or, or sympathize with a problem that they not only created, but planned to create and celebrate having done so? Like these kids are far more likely to have identity struggles, trauma from not having their mother, feeling as though they were commodified. They're not. Uh, they're not. This isn't a thing. This is this is his gut feeling about this. Uh, feelings of trauma from separation. They have like lack of medical history. They have to worry about you know potentially dozens of half siblings out there who they'll never meet. What happens if they end up dating their half sibling or something? He's These are things they have to think about. I mean, it's very. Those are things they have to think about. Not, not John's neurotic fucking obsession with this topic. <laughs> These are things they have to think about. They don't have a lack of medical history. He has no sources. No, this is all this is all just off the cuff. A unique set of problems and circumstances, which they can't exactly talk to their parents about because they might feel guilty or ungrateful. We're a fifth like, the way through the video. Or something. Maybe the parents become immediately defensive about their decision. Like we wonder why these kids disproportionately struggle with depression, delinquency, substance abuse. So, in looking into this, I found this Twitter account that claims to document all the problems with surrogacy. And so naturally, I'm like, oh, this is perfect. Let's go through this. And so then, the most recent thing I see is when they're like, <coughs> surrogacy exploits women's poverty and their need to support their own families. Exhibit A. And I'm like, oh, here we go. And I look at the picture, and it's a woman bragging about using the money she made renting out her womb to go on a vacation to New York City with two of her kids, go on another spring break vacation with her other kids, paying for soccer, dance. Spring break vacation with my kids, took my twins to New York City for their birthday, paid for soccer, dance, music lessons, doubled our savings. Yeah. Yep. Music lessons. Wow, yeah, very exploited. You know, these are very exploited people behaviors. I can I clock them a mile away. I'm like a bloodhound with this stuff. I'm, I'm so sorry that happened to you, sweetheart. You must have been gassed. Okay, literally, this is an argument for surrogacy. Yeah. Couldn't care. Couldn't care less, man. I love I love in his surrogacy so bad, he's like, wow, they're not even exploited in the process. Gaslit. You must have been manipulated. It also said she doubled her savings. You know what doubling your savings means? You know what it means when you do that, when you double your savings? It means that you had savings. People in poverty typically do not have savings. Also, poverty in America is not even a real thing. That's a discussion for a later time. We have a lower class, obviously. Yes. Let's call it what it is, though. It's a lower class in America. That's not what we mean when we say poverty. So I saw that. Disagree. Big poverty issues in America. Uh, you're a sheltered boy. And I'm like, okay. I'm sure they do good work. Anything that's putting fire down range against surrogacy is probably good work, but I'm not interested in sob stories about how women are the real victims. Actually, I think I saw more stuff about that, about how women were the poor victims rather than stuff about the children. 
and yeah, I think that's probably true. So, um, you know, again, there's a lot of conversations about this in the discourse about how women are the real victims being exploited. This Great examples tale, here. Because, of course, conservative. Mater okay, got to go back. Got to go back. Maternity shoot with surrogate mother compared to The Handmaid's Tale? You, are you opposed to The Handmaid's Tale? Like the story? Because it's about right-wingers being bad. Even though Kate Moss... Not Kate Moss. Is that her name? She's a scientist. Scientologist. Is that the right... No. That's a fucking no 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 that's a that's a that's a fucking like model or something who's the who's the handmaid's handmaid's tale what's your name Elizabeth Moss nailed it Kate Moss I just knew that there were some mosses out there yeah, Moss folks. Conservatives are incapable of making arguments that do not appeal to some victimized outgroup. Well, look, like we said, with surrogacy as a whole, there are a lot of bioethical arguments. There are a lot of arguments about women. I don't really care about those arguments because I don't really care about abstractions and I don't really care about women other than the ones I just saw at Thanksgiving. But I do care that these children have no. <laughs> I don't really care about women. God, dude. I don't even know how you can say that you're a conservative, man. <laughs> I don't care about not beating the incest allegations on no uh, bro. Ugh. Speak up for them, and they would certainly never want to be deprived of their mothers and treated as property, much less uh, go into the hands of men who have histories of perverted behavior. Yeah, all surrogacy is bad. This is especially bad. So if we can use this discussion to make people realize that surrogacy is bad, maybe make the anti-surrogacy people realize that this is even worse. We can call it a day. We can get out of here. We have to stop viewing surrogate women as victims. We also have to stop shying away from the fact that yes, it's actually worse when two men do it. Well, it has nothing to do with homosexuality. It's about exploiting women. Thank you. The anti-surrogacy discussion, like all of right-wing discourse, is filled with very weak arguments that have to appeal to these liberal tendencies by saying things like, well, it exploits impoverished women. This is just like Handmaid's Tale. And we do this because we're unconfident in our own positions, because we're cowards. Because, <laughs> because your positions are bad, John. <laughs> I think it's so interesting that he's mad at the other right-wingers for not being more right-wing on this position because it's really hard to be right-wing on this position when it's so fucking easy to see that there's not really an ethical issue. There's no more ethical issue with this than there is with adoption. And there's many ethical issues with it. Uh, we could talk about the vetting process for parenthood and stuff like that. But then you're talking about giving out fucking birthing licenses. And I'm not really down with that. I think the best way to do society is not to micromanage everyone's fucking life. It is to ensure that everyone has the highest quality of life starting off. Uh, which will lead to fewer systemic problems that way. We have just more acute problems and we can deal with them, um, you know, usually with less flood to the system and more, you can put more hands on to the issue. Um, and also in, in the systems, you know, you just have like access to healthcare, mental healthcare, you can catch the stuff earlier. Um, and then over time, you would have less um, generational trauma and you'd see this, all of this dwindle, especially mental health issues. Um, but anyway, I'm just smart or whatever. What do I know? What do I know about easily solvable problems? It's not easily solvable under capitalism, that's for sure. Capitalists definitely don't know how. Well, how will we make money when we do this? That's the fucking problem. I agree. That's, a, that's tough. What if we just made an investment in humans and believe that the, the money would shake out at the end? Because it would. Anyway. There's no price tag I would put on the Amer the quality of life on for the American people. Vote for President Jake. God bless America. Because we're cowards, we, similarly to women themselves, refuse to hold women accountable for their own behavior and call a spade a spade. And I understand, like, there are horror stories. I sympathize with that. But the types of women who would rent out their wombs tend to have genetics that would suggest they'd be more than capable of earning a living in another way, where they could just actually get married and raise their own children. Like, when we talk about why we always lose because we're cowards, this is the quintessential example of that. You can't oppose something because it's bad, only because it's really bad for this group of poor victimized people. The thing in itself is only bad and therefore worth pushing back against because it's mean to a group of people and that is bad. People are paid hundreds of thousands of dollars to try to sell this messaging to disaffected white guys in Wisconsin. Who is this for? It's like if your waiter got your order wrong, they bring you like a cheeseburger instead of an omelet instead of just saying, hey, yeah, I didn't, I didn't order a cheeseburger. I ordered a Western omelet. I don't want lunch. I want breakfast. But instead of just saying that, you're like, ah, uh, ah, uh, excuse me, hi, ah. Uh. I'm like allergic to cheeseburgers. Can I just get like two eggs, please? And like, just say what needs to, to happen. You know, and maybe it's like a tactical decision. Ooh, big brain. <laughs> 
I don't know what's wrong with him, but I think he should. Does he write these? These could be much shorter. There's just these tangents that he's trying. He's not making good metaphors. He's not. I agree, I guess, to some extent with um, you should try to communicate your needs better, but you don't have to be a dick about it. <laughs> try to communicate your needs, chat. You deserve to have your needs communicated. Uh, I'm not 100% good with this either, but. It's definitely a thing we learned not to do from, like, our parents and shit. Feeling guilt over that kind of thing. We're going to use ground that we've already lost to maybe secure a victory in the future, appeal to an incumbent framework, even if it's something that we don't like, even if it's not ours. The thing with that, though, I, I He just lets the camera roll and he thinks it's brilliant. Day. Absolutely. Purple Nickel, 32 months! Never see these people rotate back to push farther. So it seems that they actually agree with the leftist premises in themselves, but they just think that perhaps they've been taken too far, as opposed to their natural and intended conclusions. Well, just because something's natural doesn't mean it's good. Erm, um, appeal to nature fallacy. You know what's funny about that? I notice the further away we get from things that are natural, the more overwhelmed we are with very bad results. How can you say that, man? You are a Christian. You don't believe in the natural universe. You actually just don't believe in it. You reject the natural universe. <laughs> Such as these situations. Can you imagine supporting Do you mean this? like fucking Whole Foods? <laughs> Can you imagine not pushing back against this? Imagine Gee, tearing a newborn baby away from exactly. his mother. They don't even do that with puppies. The only person in the world who that baby is familiar with. He's literally crying out, craving her touch and the sound of her voice and her warmth and her smell. And she's, what, in another room bleeding by herself, refreshing her bank balance so that you can play advanced house. You're causing irreparable psychological damage, which has been proven time and time again to this child because you want to play advanced house. A child whom you claim to love and care for. What a joke, dude. Why is this allowed? The way I see it and the way the founding fathers saw it is that our rights come from God. There's no right to a child. Children aren't entitlements. They're blessings. You're not owed a child. You don't have the right to order and purchase a child. And if your rights come from nature, well, this whole process was invented to circumvent what is actually natural. And if you mean... See? He, like, literally is like, well, God, I presuppose God. And therefore, I have this conservative position. How are you going to fucking disagree with me on this? <laughs> I know mostly my chat agrees with me on this, but there's still a few stragglers behind. Um, you will not be saved by your niceties towards theism. It's a fucking cancer to everyone's brain. It rots them from the inside. He is fucked because of this. He literally understands the naturalist argument, and he's like, if God didn't exist, then the naturalist argument would be true. He is one fucking Bible study away from being an atheist, dude. I, I, I mean, if he was an atheist, he wouldn't have these positions. He just said it. Because there would be no reason for it. Because he, he believes in an archaic book. He believes in archaic things. Because religion isn't true. In that, like, a might is right sense... Don't have to <laughs> don't have to sell me on that one. That's fine. We're just going to become mightier than you and make it illegal and you're going to go to prison. But it's true because if you have a right to a child, that means human beings. <laughs> he likes might is right. They're not human beings. How do you have rights to somebody who also has rights? And I wouldn't go as far as to say it makes human beings property because, you know, they wouldn't support something like slavery unless it was us being enslaved. They really, I think, only care about their power and making their enemies miserable. Simple as that. Like, that's how they view existence. Everything exists Ooh. for their pleasure. Enemies are people who impede in any capacity their pleasure, even with virtue signaling. Like, that's ultimately just using the alleged suffering of other groups of people to pleasure themselves by publicly expressing their altruism. It makes them feel good. So what? You've literally virtue signaled in this video a million times. You just don't realize it. What a dumbass. <laughs> this whole thing's a virtue signal. He, you're literally like, it's not virtuous to be gay. Fuck off. <laughs> so, so dumb, dude. He projects a ton. This whole thing is projection. Surrogacy in general is wrong and it's selfish. Infertility is not a death sentence. I mean, a lot of times, especially nowadays, it's related to your lifestyle with all the chemicals in our food and our water, our clothing, etc. Hold on. Did I just say chemicals in the clothing? Okay, gamers. Imagine for a moment if you could turn the world... Oh, my fucking God. This is excellent for us, though. We get to skip more of this. Perfect. Perfect. Let's do this. Child's right to his mother. Will these people consider that? All right, chat. I mean, you can interrupt this at any point at this point, um, but we'll come back to it. We're finishing this video. Probably not, but we will have to consider that when thinking about what is to be done with this issue. Adoption's one thing, but surrogacy, like made to order creation of new life, that's selfish. That's wrong. He continues to repeat himself on this and just says it's selfish and wrong to do surrogacy and he actually in 30 minutes hasn't made a new argument he's just said many contemptible things w during the same argument let's see if anything will develop uh we are a little under halfway 
an adoption in itself is supposed to be like babysitting or caretaking. Like, all right, yeah, we'll take it from here, food, water, shelter, clothing, right? And it's like, okay, got it. And what's understood is the best case scenario for the child given the circumstances, which is to have a positive male and female presence in the child's life. It's not just about- Why is that inherently good and preferable to any other situation? About like adult supervision. Okay, yeah, two moms, two dads, they, them, who cares? Just feed it. Well, you know, studies show they're actually uh, just as well off as children raised in nuclear households. Yeah, they uh, not only are they just as well off, they're often more well off because often same sex households have to go through more hoops to get the kids. They might be well adjusted in the sense that they keep their nose clean, do relatively well in school, pursue higher education, etc. When you start to examine the less superficial metrics. Uh, I wouldn't tell a dying kid that they were going to heaven. That is cruel. Yeah. Like, what the fuck? How is that? How is that better? Should you lie to your dying child? No. <laughs> Anti-theist. Easy. Easy one. Dying dying children also don't deserve to be lied to. Correct. I wouldn't tell it to my, my not dying child either. Does it really implicate the overall quality of life, sense of being? Not so much. And again, it's really not complicated. The only question that matters is, is this good for society? No other question ultimately matters. Is it popular to want to get rid of this? No. We haven't held power in opinion curating institutions in a long time, so nothing we believe is popular. <laughs> wah, wah, you know, but it's still important. Is it politically correct? Same answer. No, not really. The good news is that public opinion really doesn't matter. So we can't let that dissuade us. If we're organized enough, we can do whatever we want. But still, for the ecosystem, which is... <laughs> Such a fascist, dude. He's super proud of his fascist opinions there. Well, it doesn't really matter what the popular opinion is. If we're organized enough, we can do whatever we want. Part of that's true in America, for sure, because of the situation uh, of, our, of our governance, which is uh, very consolidated. Uh, into the elite class and we're allowed to uh, vote for some of them um, so I understand the distaste for uh, electoral politics however um, at the state side uh, it's much more granular and actually representative and these things can trickle up into the regular society and we could um, also do the same thing that John Doyle is talking about through actual grassroots involvement in local community government and uh, eventually national government which um, I should also do, but you know, but you should do it too. I would vote for you, chat. Spent billions of dollars talking about the family. You would think they would take a little bit more issue with this. You weaken marriage by liberalizing divorce laws. Now you want to liberalize marriage laws so that anyone can get married and you expect uh -huh. this to like work out for you. You expect to conserve something. You know, well, no, because they're controlled opposition. But I did see this case recently where a woman who was a surrogate was diagnosed with breast cancer 25 weeks into the pregnancy. And so to uh -huh. get chemotherapy, she wanted to deliver the child prematurely so that everyone could have a chance to survive. And the two men who hired her didn't like this idea because they didn't want to deal with the health complications that may occur with a premature delivery, since typically babies are, you know, like an accessory to these kinds of people. And I get it, you know, I had my ridge back from show dogs, but he's also a dog. Not someone I'm going to claim to love or be a father to. Well, no, I love he's a good boy. But anyways, you know, it's like you order prints, they don't come out right, so you're like, eh, I don't want it, except it's a living person. So they said, no, we're not paying for a baby born before 38 weeks because of potential health issues, so you have to immediately terminate the pregnancy. She said, no, I don't want to do that. I'll just adopt him. Or if not me, I have an uncle who says that he'll adopt him. And then the guys were like, no, actually, we're going to demand a death certificate now. And so they're threatening legal action. The courts in California get involved to save the day. <sighs> that was close. And then the court says that while they can't force her to terminate the pregnancy, they can, at the request of the two men, force her to have life-saving care denied to the baby after he's delivered. Justice. So that's exactly what happened. The boy died on the table. The woman, whose name I believe is Brittany, said that the whole experience made her feel like a rented-out uterus. I don't know what she expected, but yeah, that's exactly what you were. This is a problem with capitalism, man. And the ju judicial system. Yeah. Uh, and frankly, patriarchy, the misogyny towards the woman in regards to what she wanted and her wishes. Uh, in the, uh, you know, because they don't take, like... Uh, women's medical situation seriously. But this is a problem that, you know, leftists would solve. <laughs> uh, he doesn't understand. Yeah, these are... Yeah, I think it's perfectly reasonable for her to be like, uh, I'll take the kid. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I, I agree that it's a fucked up situation. Um, the reason that, that happened was a money dispute, however. This is a capitalism problem, my dude. If she had health care, that baby would be alive because they wouldn't have had to pay for it. Which is why the baby died, John. That you're so upset about. Is lacked lack of her access to health care without it being paid for by richer people that didn't want to pay for it. So <clears throat> another L for the capitalist American healthcare system. Uh, and it cost a life. So from the moment of your child's conception, he was a oh, commodity. No. Did you try to take good care of the commodity? The commodity Hmm, the commodified healthcare caused a death? 
John, are you new here? Ready? Sure. Well, do we clap? Are we supposed to celebrate that? Now, a normal country would think, wow, if they were so ready to discard that baby boy, maybe that's indicative that they have no right to purchase children. I mean, they sound like terrible parents. And again, though, a normal country probably wouldn't allow for purchasing children in the first place. So I guess we kind of get what we deserve there. So yeah. Yeah, the hyper capitalist hellscape. John? I don't know what happened to those guys. They probably just got another surrogate. A normal country would also look at somebody like Shane Dawson, who has a history of saying that six-year-olds are sexy, pretending to jerk off the pictures of 11-year-olds, attempting to defend being attracted to children is just a fetish, admitting to having Googled child content. Uh, he's talked about having sex with his cat. It's called Naked Baby Sexy. He's admitted that he was molested as a child. We would maybe look at that and say, okay, if anybody should not be able to... Well, being molested as a child isn't one of those things that uh, you get to add on there, John. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, I, I think Shane Dawson is a sussy person to give a child to. But you're opposed to it because Shane's gay. You know. I purchased a child, and now he's got a pair of twin boys from a surrogate. Why do the gay guys always get little girls? Why is it never little girls? Uh, lucky cameraman, thanks for following. A um, uh, lot of gay families have girls. Uh, you're making that up. Someone should look into that. It seems <clears throat> unfair. Someone should look into this thing I just made up. All right. It's unegalitarian. And for the record, I'm not suggesting anything about this guy. I'm just saying... A lot of boxes that are checked off here, like a comical, like a comical amount of boxes. They also created 10 other human lives and just flushed them down the toilet, by the way. Great parents, because I guess they weren't optimal. And then they vlogged about it. Like, wow, how do I make murdering children like about me? How do I make content from this? Like, this is, this is, then they're taking photos with the baby where it's meant to simulate breastfeeding. They're posing in the bed, acting as though they just delivered. Dude, you did it twice. This is the second one. And this time you can even see the edge of the baby's head. And it's clearly not on a nipple or anything. It's crazy. these children the same way that Pete Buttigieg did when he got the babies. These are red flags. You'd think it should be more difficult to purchase a human child than a... <laughs> Pete Buttigieg. Um, Pete Buttigieg has uh, a nuclear family. Pete Buttigieg has a, a son and a daughter. Joseph and Penelope. Wow. What a bunch of cuties, dude. Uh, I'm not even a Pete Buttigieg guy. I don't care. But uh, he can have a family with his husband. <laughs> you know? Uh, lucky cameraman. Thanks for following, dude. And a firearm in this country. I, I say some say silly things on the internet. Now I have to wait three days or just get totally denied from purchasing a firearm. These guys say things like this, do things like this, and just walk right through the door. Do something which nobody ever would have thought would have been considered normal practice, let alone some kind of right or entitlement, which is purchasing human children to play advanced house. Human trafficking is perfectly legal, as long as you're a homosexual and you live in a Western country. Like, you look up the definition of human trafficking, it describes this, except it prefaces it with the unlawful act of blah, blah, blah. The only difference between the act and the unlawful act is those words. Like yep. That's right. You can you can buy surrogacy, yeah. Like, how... Ha ha Try explaining this with, like, any other form of medicine man like, this is just a medical thing like you're, you're upset at the capitalist system for allowing this i don't know like one is lawful one is not it's words on paper intrinsically it's all the same what is occurring is all the same now if i were a robot if i'm a pattern detecting entity and i looked at this story with a guy who's got a history making comments like this in a type of relationship which has a disproportionate pattern with certain behaviors like this I'm it doesn't have a disproportionate pattern by the way it doesn't that is a myth. I might reach some conclusions which aren't very nice. And then laying in the bed too, acting like he delivered the baby, it's such a crude mockery. You think that's a crude mockery? Wait till I tell you what they're trying to imply. For that wasn't Shane laying in the bed. That was that was someone else napping in the bed. That was the husband of Shane, who I don't know. Who's that baby? You ever seen Exit Only Sign? Probably there for a pretty good reason, right? Well, some people like to ignore very obvious rules, usually because they didn't have good parents. But the reason that they do those photo shoots is because they get off to it. They enjoy subverting and mocking what is natural. They think it's naughty. They like the pride. They enjoy the mockery of it. And the children validate the relationship. If they wanted to be parents, then they could just go and be parents. But the baby acts as an accessory to what they actually want, their true priority, which is to identify and behave in the ways that they do. So that's why they have to do the whole wholesome chungus gay couple in a bed LARP. People have fetishes for pretending to be animals. You think they wouldn't have a fetish for subverting the institution of marriage? Of course they why? Why do you think being married is a fetish, or having wanting to be dads is a fetish? The fact that John can't decouple this from sex is incredibly suspicious. <laughs> what? How do you not understand someone wanting to be a parent? The idea of it. 
They're like, yeah, I want to be, I want to be a dad. <laughs> how do you not, how are you not like, oh, okay, that makes sense. Well, they're gay. Yeah. What, what's the difference? I don't know. <laughs> They do. Imagine taking any of these people at their word. Why would you trust? Why would you trust? Well, they'll take it this far, but then they'll stop. They won't take it any further. We just want to. What's step up. further? What further are you worried about? And look after these poor foster kids. Give them a home. Oh, okay, sounds fair enough to me. Look at where that's trending now. And then they even get preference actually when adopting because technically speaking they're infertile. And then that is trending towards gay guys suing to have their surrogates covered by the American taxpayer since technically speaking they're infertile. And so to not give them that would be discrimination since infertility is defined as unprotected sex for 12 months uh, with no conception. And yeah, no one wants to have a couple uncomfortable conversations. I truly struggle. No one has an uncomfortable com What's uncomfortable about that? No, we don't conceive. <laughs> it's not uncomfortable. What what makes you uncomfortable about that, John? Interesting. <laughs> you can just be gay and they just give you babies now. That's John's claim, yep. Yeah. I struggle to think of something more disgustingly selfish than this, and I hate that word in politics. It's disgusting. It's very feminine. But I mean that sincerely. The word disgusting is feminine? You're so fucking... You're in deep turmoil about your gender, dude. The level of selfishness on display here does... Evoke a <laughs> this is deep it's turmoil. It's very offensive. And again, we're going to go through all of this in definitive levels of detail in the future. But what's more is that we've actually seen data from countries that have had same-sex marriage since the beginning of this century. And something like 96% of gay people didn't even care to get married. And before that, no one was stopping gay couples from getting married in private ceremonies. No one was stopping gay couples from doing what they do in the privacy of their own home, like we were told. So Privately. How is that an argument? They literally couldn't be... Are you only, a, like, private own home? So I can't, if I was gay, I couldn't go to the fucking grocery store with my boyfriend. That's what you're saying, John? <laughs> like, eat shit, boy. Like, fuck you. I'm, <laughs> man, if I was gay, I would proudly, I would, I would, I would slap my boyfriend's ass in the, next to the bananas. I don't know why the bananas. I was just matching the produce aisle, and the first thing there is like bananas and oranges. Just don't be gay in public. Can I go to the fucking beach? Can I go to the zoo? Can I go to dinner? Like, eat shit, man. So, what you learn when you actually study the real history of the gay rights movement. Uh -huh. The real history. history, by the way, like that's how we got to where we are in terms of the LGBT stuff, right? We know that. That's not my opinion. That's just knowledge. But what you learn when you study the. What's just knowledge? That they that they they didn't want to be confined to house arrest to be gay. Yeah, I guess true. Actual history of that movement is that it was never about privacy or any of the other bumper sticker platitudes that you hear about. It's all the same. It's about normalization and validation, promotion and enforcement. Ultimately, why do they want to get married? They don't tend to be interested in marriage at all, let alone staying married or in virtually no cases even staying committed to each other. Why? They're clearly interested in marriage. Uh, there is a governmental incentive from your tax bracket, uh, and there's also property rights and stuff. It's very deeply tied to capitalism, um, and also a lot of people think that marriage is a sign of like a love covenant, like you do, because they love each other, man. That's why. They love each other. John? Why do they want to adopt children? Why do they because they like to have families people adopt children when they're not gay too they want to order children normalization and validation children are treated as trophies to validate those relationships to subvert the standards of the nuclear family which they hate in so many cases because it failed to protect them and so they resent it so the bottom line is that if you do this you're depriving your child of the right to his mother and to be made out of love like what kind of a foundation is that cowards want to avoid the extent of this well it has nothing to do with gay people it's about surrogacy i generally agree but i think you're being a bit dishonest i think we're not trying to make america great again right now because does that mean that you're against surrogacy but you're totally fine with a gay couple adopting a child really? yes yeah, man. Really? Even when they're given preference for being technically infertile? Look, I agree. All surrogacy is bad. Even when they're given preference for being technically infertile? I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. I don't give a shit. All that's because of the commodified healthcare system, okay? I do not give a shit. But can we acknowledge there's a difference here? Can we be adults? Or are you saying that love is love and it doesn't matter if it's a straight couple or a gay couple? It's all the same, right? There's no differences. Love is right. love. Here's the truth that people don't want to touch. Gay yeah. couples will never be able to meet the standard of straight couples. It's impossible. Why? There might be overlap in some cases. What standard? But for the most part, it's entirely separate. It's a totally different category. With two men adopting a child. But you're not in a relationship. How can you say that you know what how what this takes or how it is? Fuck bicycles! I really, really want to uh, smooch this asshole in his weasley little face until he stops talking. Amazing. Such a nice message, Sid. Thank you. Let's give him little cheek kisses because he's so nice until he just can't talk anymore.
Well, I still have my cob. You don't, Laser Panther. You don't have your cob. There's no cobs. You're cobless. Ruin. How can you provide an example of femininity if you're not a woman? I mean, not that they adopt little girls, uh, but you know what I mean. Like, or if you're a man, I mean, how can you provide an example of a masculine identity if you're? You want to know why Dave hates bicycles? Because they are, they are uh, in the way of him on the road. Sometimes, sometimes he's driving and someone will be riding a bike nearby. That was the conversation yourself don't have one now this is where it gets tricky you might be a man in the sense that you take fitness very seriously you excel in your career you do well for yourself a lot of gay men check these boxes especially the ones who make a lot of money that then spend on children but what actually causes them to be gay what causes homosexuality they never found a gene for it crazy enough what it actually is it's always an artificial disruption in a young boy's natural development into his masculine identity there's psychological literature on this that has been censored and shelved away like the ending of raiders of the lost ark but it exists and it was never disproven it was declared offensive basically by activists infiltrating the american psychological association many of whom were openly homosexual to do precisely this which they now brag about using your tax dollars 50 years later mm -hmm. Story of how American Psychiatric Association decided in 1973 that homosexuality was no longer a mental illness. Yeah. Yes. It's not a mental illness. It's an orientation. It's super normal. Um, I, I'll go. I'll go further. I'll I'll steel man your argument. If homosexuality was a mental illness, you could still fuck. You could still be uh, gay. I don't care. You can still love a your boyfriend or whatever. I don't give a shit. It it, ma it matters zero to me. It's not important. Oh, it's a mental. Illness. Okay, I don't care. It's not, but I don't I don't care anyways. It's not compelling to me. <laughs> oh no, it's a mental illness that I want to wear and fucking address. Okay, I don't think so. I think you can wear a dress and not be like, I don't know, wacky for some reason. It's normal. What dresses are cool? Wear a dress. <laughs> like don't care i don't like oh no my my mental illness drove me to eat this entire pint of ice cream don't care eat your ice cream man so homophobic people who probably make it harder on the children of couples absolutely and we'll elaborate on this in the aforementioned dissertation i will feed you baby birds do not worry but it's not genetic there are some biological factors that, that can make you predisposed towards manifesting homosexual attraction and behavior such as your prenatal hormone exposure but ultimately it will not manifest without some sort of environmental influence and so you've now given this child a permanent identity crisis you, you can never love that child i mean you love that child insofar as he makes you feel like a parent but love is sacrificial and if you truly love that child mm -hmm. you would not uh i disagree i i do not think that every single person that is gay comes about through the nurture instead of nature. Um, the the reports that gay people give on when they experience their first um, notions of sexuality and attraction are very near the same as everybody else. They're, you know, toddler to... My dick like, is actually so moist. It's terrible timing, Rublum. Terrible timing. Uh... Like preschool age to like early first second grade, like four to six years old. That's everybody. You get your first crushes. You're like, oh, I'm attracted to this person, and it has you know has nothing to do with your fucking you know getting harmed or anything. I do think that things that happen like tertiary things around our sexuality. I don't think our core sexuality, unless maybe I don't know. Maybe you could get fucked up, but like. The average person is not just, like, fucking abused into being... Devi There's many people who are abused that don't experience any kind of, like, deviation in their sexuality from what John expects, right? John has all the wit of a particularly witless milk bone. Ooh, a milk bone. Chat, you have a little shmomentum if you want to um, interrupt him. I've rented his mother's womb and then taken the child away from her. So that you we have 28 have minutes. You're not actually a father. I don't know what you are. I don't know that I care enough to figure it out. But I know you're not a father. You should have sacrificed your desire for the child, but it was the other way around. So you're not a father. And I know that you know that because a father's first and deepest instinct is to protect his kids. And Core sexuality. Everyone is somewhere on the bisexual spectrum. Monosexuality is a myth. I would tend to agree. Um, I think I think most people are probably like more fluid than they would be without the hetero normativity shoved down their face um but i mean as as a gold star straight i am genuinely only attracted to like femme presentation um 
in an innate sense. Uh, and not just in that, like, you know, in the without any of the, uh, you know, social stuff we put into it, just like the just a, a, a femme monkey body in a fucking like if we if we were all still in the plains climbing trees and knocking on coconuts, uh, I would still be quite attracted to the ladies and not not the dudes. Um, and I don't know. Like, it's not a thing I think about, you know what I mean? Uh, but the more femme you get, femme boys, femme boys are too mask for me. I don't like their skinny little weird bodies, dude. <laughs> keep your keep your goddamn scrawny femme. Keep your femme. You can keep your femme boys. If if I was gay, I'd be into the big boys, okay? Because we're better. Jake, you're the weird one here. That's true. I am the weird one. <laughs> Everyone's like, but what about me? <laughs> Facilitate their well-being. And from the moment of that child's conception, you not only ignore that, you did the exact opposite, all in service of yourself. This child was not conceived out of love, let alone marriage or something natural. You commissioned his conception out of selfishness and perversion. Literally, from the moment the life was created, it was never about the well-being of the child. <laughs> only about your desires, which apparently are worth the price of depriving that child of a mother's love and warmth. You <laughs> it, it seems to be a lot more about John's desires for other people to not have families that he would be uncomfy with. Commissioned a life for the purpose of robbing him of that. That's the first thing to happen to this child. It was your plan for that to happen. <laughs> Well, how is this even different from biological parents? I mean, it's all, you know, it's not being a material. What about Ryan Reynolds? Uh, I'm not sexually attracted to Ryan Reynolds, though I do. Uh, I would hang out with Ryan Reynolds, though. He seems like a nice guy. Um, but, uh, yeah, he doesn't get me going. I don't know why. I don't know. I don't know why, I, why I'm not attracted to fellas. I can understand why he's attractive for some people. I honestly think it's 90% his riz, though, right? Ryan Reynolds is too pointy for me. Yeah. I mean, I've I've had sexual relations with quite fit people in the past. I'm a, I'm a pudge enjoyer though. I like a little squishies. So, you know me. Well, stop being a dork. You know, this is spiritual. This transcends our comprehension of existence. Every child has a right to their mother and to their father, but especially to their mother. Dads have been ditching kids since the beginning of time. I'm not saying that's right. I'm just saying the idea of a child being sold to two men and being deprived of his mother, maybe his mother volunteered to sell him, like that is yet again a whole new level of man-made horror beyond my comprehension. We've got this weird belief that we're like entitled to live any life we want to live by simulation. I'm entitled to have blonde hair, so I dye it. I'm entitled to have big. You are in, You can. Ha I don't know about entitled to have blonde hair, but you can have blonde hair if you want it. It's not entitlement. Just have it. It's it, it's it's me. It's God. What what is this entitlement thing? It is it is meaningless whether or not you have blonde hair. Do it. It's up to you. Your choice. Literally point, opposed to hair dye now. I want to see blonde John Doyle immediately. Ooh, so I get plastic surgery. But if you can't become a parent naturally, then the question becomes, are you equally likely as, say, a typical couple to parent this child successfully? If not, are you more likely to do it competently or incompetently? What if your likelihood to manifest problematic behaviors is significantly greater? Ignoring even that, what if there's virtually no chance that your he's child... Not, will... He's not given any data to support this yet. He says he's going to. ...develop normally and will always be longing to have his mother and his father present. Children who grow up in these houses... Is it going to be from the outdated, rejected 1973 why being gay is actually a mental illness papers? have a 25% chance of being at some point forced to have sex against their will, a 25% chance of contracting an STI, which matches uh, what? suspiciously well with the previous figure. There's a 29% chance that they'll end up identifying as LGBT, 24% chance that they'll be suicidal. They're significantly more likely to experience depression and trouble with future relationships. And again, this is obviously true. And you see similar, though less significant trends with step parents, adopted parents. The further you get away from the nuclear family, the more problems arise, obviously. And we've discussed before the problems with what is referred to as gay marriage. Not even like the arguments against it, but I mean like the dynamics of these relationships, the rates of being open relationships, the number of sex partners. <laughs> So he's just like he's just saying things are bad. <clears throat> like things are bad. I think 25% of people being gay makes a lot of sense just based on the general vibe of people in the world. Like I think I think it's much closer like 50% of people are probably going to be queer enough to identify as such in the future. Um, I don't know how many trans people there will necessarily be, but I do think we're going to stop identifying as binary gender people very often. Like, it just has lots of meaninglessness. There's not a lot of reason to really focus on 
such gendered terms all the time. I'm sure that we'll probably cycle into some form of, you know, people will be identified more about, about their, like, individuality than they will be about their collective um, stuff at one at some point. Um, but they'll all be part of communities, and so they'll all know each other. Anyway, just notice that Doyle has yet to show a single lesbian couple with kids. Well, of course, because it's not about lesbians. It's about his ick toward specifically gay men, which is projection. Partners on average. The length of time that these things even last on average. If the average American, here's what I'll say. If the average American knew what goes on, they would be like, what the heck? <laughs> Wait a minute, buddy. Hold on. What? Gay couple charged with less than their doctors and also pimped them out to pedophile ring. Oh, no. It happened. God. Do you think that they were Christians? That's why they had to make their slogan literally equality, saying love is love. We're just kind of silly. It's equal. It's the same. It's a little bit silly. That's why the well-put-together couples are actually more subversive. The ones who present themselves well, the quiet gay couple in the Vineyard Vines pullover, they're just so nice. They're just, they're just a little bit silly. People's it's also they're all white, and they, they're all upper class. Entire perception is informed by what they see on television. The image of the well-put-together gay couple is actually more subversive than the outright degenerate gay people because it convinces normal people, oh, you know, I guess it is pretty much the same. <laughs> Accepting these things, getting to where we are now. That's degenerate gay people. Uh, the doggies and then a bunch of people who don't give a shit like literally look at how this looks it's just a convention like yeah it's so fucking oh my god I can't believe it you can dress up in whatever you want I don't care at all I'm so outraged dude they have puppy masks I don't care that didn't happen because of pride parades I it happened because of the shit. media pushing the image of the clean cut gay guy now people think there's no overlap and then they get confused when they I don't even, how do you even know those people are gay what the fuck maybe there's a pride parade I guess well, it's not necessary that they're gay you see people getting canceled for saying, well, hey, we probably shouldn't have furry BDSM demonstrations at family-friendly pride events. And they <coughs> wrote about this, too, in their activist manifestos, how they can take advantage of the straight male tendency to want to protect, the straight female tendency to want to empathize with, and use it to forward their agenda. Which, in conclusion, means that if you disagree with anything that I've said, it's because you've fallen victim to gay propaganda. But it's true. I mean, according to, what is it, the American College of Pediatricians, homosexual couples provide a far less stable and safe environment for children. They've noted that the violence among homosexual partners is too... American College of Pediatrics. Whoa. The American College of Pediatrics is a socially conservative advocacy group of pediatricians and other healthcare professionals in the United States founded in 2002. The group's primary focus is advocating against abortion rights and against rights for gay, queer, and transgender people. ACPEDS promotes, I love it's called ACPEDS, <laughs> uh, promotes conversion therapy and purity culture. As of 2022, its membership has reported at 700 physicians. The organization's view on the relevance of sexual orientation to parenting differs from the position of the American Ca Academy of Pediatrics, which holds that there is no connection between orientation and the ability to, good, to be a good parent and to raise healthy and well-adjusted children. It's so interesting how they come out of the gate with, oh, it's in, from Gainesville, Florida, and they only make 100 k a year. Wow. Actually lost money last year. Fantastic. Uh, so you have to start with a presupposition, and then you come to a conclusion. It's the same for every single conservative all time. Two to three times more common than among married heterosexual couples, and homosexual partnerships are significantly more prone to disillusion than heterosexual marriages, with the average homosexual partnership only lasting something like two to three mm -hmm. years. They're also far more likely than heterosexuals mm -hmm. to experience mental illness, substance abuse, suicidal tendencies, shortened lifespans, uh, and basically they've concluded that given the current body of research, it's inappropriate and potentially hazardous to children, and dangerously irresponsible to change the age-old prohibition on homosexual parenting, whether by adoption, foster care, reproductive manipulation. Doesn't actually show uh, any of is rooted it. in the best available science. Does that sound like a good environment for children? Hmm, man. If only, I'm, I'm glad no one checked the source. So we have to protect the needs of children over the desires of adults, in conclusion. Uh, let alone adults who have no business raising a child. Well, how can you be pro-life and anti-surrogacy? Well, it's not about you. It's, it's about giving life to the babies. Yeah, I'm pro-life because pro-life is just good marketing for not wanting babies to die. It does not literally mean I just want there to be infinite people in the world. And much less... It's just good marketing? ...to have them made to order and stripped away from their birthright. The issue of surrogacy has little to do with life, actually. It's counterintuitive, but you think that, and then you go, okay, well, how can the left support abortion, which is about killing babies, and then also support surrogacy, which is about creating babies? It doesn't... Because those, those are both about choice. How... How, what? Certainly you will understand. It makes sense. And yeah, I mean, ignoring how many typically die in the process of surrogacy, like we mentioned earlier, what, what matters to them isn't so much life. It's being able to do whatever they want. It's playing God. God it's, it's not playing God. It's just having the choice. Doing whatever they want. They literally can do whatever they want. They can have babies or not have them. Yep. Freedom and human rights. Yeah, man. Uh, 
playing God. God isn't real. You don't have to play God. You're, you're much more powerful than God ever has been because you exist. Total feminist domination. And frankly, there's a lot of really stupid sentiment on the right that's just completely separated from reality. And the worst part of it is that included in the tenets of it are that if you don't agree, you're the brainwashed one. You're paid off by the World Economic Forum. And a lot of it is just this really low IQ conspiracy theory stuff about the globalists being anti-human. Because if it's an the anti-human globalists. thing, we can all team up and unite. That the gamble. American College of Pediatrics is such a familiar name with the American, or uh, such a similar name with the American Academy of Pediatrics. Hmm, almost like it was intentionally done to mislead and missource. Yep. Against them, no exclusion necessary, so long as you're not evil. If you're a human, you can be on the team as well. If it's an anti-human thing, then it's evil and satanic, and we have to unite together, you know, like like in a movie. I don't think it's an anti-human thing. It's more that they're anti-nature, even post-human. They Cringe. hate excellence, and they hate virtue. They hate childbirth, not because it creates life, but because it's natural, and because it's beautiful. If they were anti-human, they would hate surrogacy, but they don't. They love it because it's unnatural. It seeks to conquer nature. I'll put it this way. What have these anti-human people worked harder for in the last few decades? Preventing nice, wholesome, quiet communities from forming, or preventing crowded slums from forming? If I were... <laughs> Uh, I'd love a community. I'd love communities to be able to form, um, but capitalism dictates that we have to have granular, uh, non-communal spaces, and the only places that we can hang out have to be places that we spend money. Um, uh, poor city planning. This is literally Alex Jones talking points. Yeah, he's fucking nuts, dude. Or anti-human, I would probably crack down on the one with the most people. It's anti-human. Maybe it's not about people. It's almost an egalitarian word, isn't it, right? Mm. People. It puts us all equal, right? When I say I'm pro-human, I mean that to say I am in favor of human flourishing and beauty and excellence and accomplishment. You're not for that. Because in order to flourish, they have to be who they are and not who you want them to be, John. Like, literally, human beings cannot flourish under a system where they are stuffed into spaces they don't want to be and forced to live in lifestyles they don't want to live. I have no idea how you feel like this is a winnable fight. It's just not a winnable fight. Do not let them <laughs> ever tell you that you have to live some kind of fucking way, okay? <laughs> so dumb. If they're anti-human, it's because they are opposed to that. But if it were just defined as like literally millions of blob people just all existing somewhere, some ugly, disgusting communist city, some 15... I don't want to live in this. What? 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 I'm saying an ugly communist city because this was in fucking the Soviet Union or something during the brutalist nonsense. Like, I hope you yeah. really have a fantastic day. Uh, Harold Ween Usman. Thanks for the prime, dude. Welcome back, Harold. Uh, so yeah, I mean, if you ever talk to a communist, that's not really what anyone wants. I don't want an apartment situation where everyone's stacked on each other. Uh, this is a, this is a response to like housing needs in big cities. Um, but this is like an authoritarian regime. He doesn't care. I'm not an authoritarian, man. Couldn't possibly be. In a city, whatever they would love that. I want more power to the people. They would get off to that. Or they'll say, well, they're not only anti-human, they're eugenicists. What? Anti-human eugenicists? <laughs> Eugenics? I don't know anything about that. What do I look like? <laughs> no more dirt. To you, some right, ancient well, Greek philosopher. Here. Look, we should be careful with that word, eugenics. But you know what the other side of that coin is that we should really pay some more attention to since it's just running buck wild right now? Dysgenics. Artificially subsidizing people who otherwise would not have lots of children into having lots of children. Transferring wealth away from the productive and generally polite and law-abiding members of society to people who are the complete opposite of that. So oh my fucking god, dude. <sighs> Are we going to get into Great Replacement Theory? That they can have seven or eight kids. What do you think the ripple effect of that is going to look like? When you've got a society that is structured to disincentivize, to make low status, to make unattractive, starting families and having children, but only to a certain part of the population. To the rest, well, we're actually going to take money from those people. We're going to give it to you guys to breed like rabbits. And we've got... Oh. That's not what anyone's advocating for. This isn't anyone's scheme. <laughs> I think he's talking about the disparity between, like, the more educated and wealthy you are, it tends to be that you have less kids, fewer kids. And John is like, well, it must be because of something. It's because of the lack of education and resources. Like, career people have access to birth control and health care and prophylactics and sexual education. Uh, and not a lot of them want kids because they're on that hustle, that grind set. Uh, and when they do have them, they have them later and they're planned. Like, people are having their kids into their fucking 30s and 40s, which is awesome. <laughs> like, uh, and poor people have them because they fuck for fun 
and they're not told not to come in the box, and that's bad. Uh, often in southern, undereducated, impoverished, underfreed um, uh, people, they're just like subjugated by their totalitarian Republican governments. Like literally, stepping into a southern government is so crazy. After living in the north in Michigan, in f- fucking full bore freedom, you know, full bore. Not really. I mean, we have we have our problems, but <laughs> open borders so we can do the same for illegal aliens. What happens in that scenario? Nice quick one. From those people, we're gonna give it to you guys to breed like rabbits, and we've got open borders so we can. Yeah, he's doing great replacement. Fiscal burden of illegal immigration on the United States taxpayers. Do the same for. Uh, subtracting tax revenue paid by illegal aliens <laughs> for the gross negative impact. Wow! Imagine, imagine what could happen if they were able to just live uh, legally in the country, and then they would be able to pay their taxes like you know you want them to. You say they want you want them to, or something like. Hello? Also, by the way, this is not true. Uh, the labor disparity, like, there are, there are entire um, uh, industries, especially in agriculture, where the borderline, I mean, not borderline, the slave wages that they pay uh, illegal immigrants uh, in these towns and in these farms um, is in itself a boon to the agricultural situation in these places. And it's part of the expected uh, labor market and the availability of labor uh, in these in these sectors. I mean, this is a capitalism problem again, man. Surprise. Illegal aliens. What happens in that scenario? <coughs> Fast forward 20 years. What does that country look like? We shouldn't artificially control for characteristics in people. Hey, I'm not saying that we should, but we are. Literally, he's doing great replacement theory. He's just as Tucker Carlson shit. Are. Literally, as a matter of policy, we are just in the opposite direction. It is evolving, but backward. So somebody's doing it. It's not like neutral. It's just going in the opposite direction from what you think. Maybe we should start talking about that. You want to know why people aren't having kids? Because anytime you go somewhere in public, it's like you can't even recognize it. You go to the airport, you go to a shopping mall, you go to an amusement park, you go downtown to have dinner, watch a show. Any place in the country where people are gathered, there are too many people, and it sucks. It throws off the vibe. Why aren't people having kids? Yeah, the economy's bad. People have always had families, though, throughout history, even throughout circumstances that are far worse than what we have now. Unbelievably worse than what we have now. Okay. They needed labor. They had kids because they needed f- labor, and also they didn't have sex ed. <laughs> like they had no prophylaxis and shit. Uh, uh, we're, we're 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 little animals, and we reproduce at a rate that we can uh, proliferate at um, due to our evolutionary traits. We're like little rabbits, dude. Yeah. Okay, uh, I've got one. What are the fertility rates looking like for people living under occupation? Are they rushing to have children? Are they rushing to start families? What's the line? Noble creatures refuse to breed in captivity. Maybe there's something to be said about that. Is that the whole problem? No, wouldn't claim that it is. But it's certainly something, something that's being omitted from the current discourse surrounding the issue. Yeah, a lot of people are abstaining from having kids because they are under occupation of capitalist control. I agree. Kids just died a lot back then. Lots of dead kids. And do I even trust that people will realize this consciously? Maybe, but like we said, the tools to articulate the feelings surrounding what they're experiencing in this country have, for the most part, been stripped away from them. So instead, they might say, well, it's because of the economy. Well, I'm just not ready. Whatever reason. But those experiences do have effects on people. There's no way that they don't. They it don't- straight up is the economy, dude. It literally is that people can't pay for these things. Healthcare is too expensive. Education is too expensive. All of the people that you're in your, like, he's a little younger than me. And so he doesn't quite understand because he's so fucking, you know, he's a Republican. Uh, Like, the economy collapsed when I graduated, man. Like, out of high school. Like, this generation of people were held back, like, a decade of economic advancement under, you know, the normal capitalist expectations that our parents had for us. And, like, there's just a lot of people who who didn't break out and have the kinds of careers that they were supposed to have, they were told that they were going to have when they went to college. Uh, because of a bunch of stuff. There's a log jam in employment because the boomers stay there forever and hold this power. Uh, and, um, you know, now they're phasing out of power and now the uh, Gen X is kind of coming into it and then the millennials will take over. <clears throat> the forever old maltster generation. Yeah, I mean, like, uh, there's just there's just lots of problems, man. Lots of problems. 
go out and you feel like a stranger in your own country, like an alien, that doesn't exactly make you excited to make moves that would dig your roots deeper into conquered territory. <laughs> it's so funny how he's self-reporting here, how he feels like an alien because everybody else is out and there's just so many people having fun and he's alone and being annoying and no one likes him. And this just continues because our government just keeps importing millions of people every year. So there's no natural rebalancing. I would almost prefer that, honestly. There's fewer people, but at least they're Americans. You know, like 50 years ago when our country's population was about half of what it is now. Wow, what a terrible place to live. <sighs> Must have been real bland. A real ghost town. Certainly not the height of Western civilization, which produces a nostalgia that every American resonates with and that every conservative movement tries to capture in some form, even if they just ultimately betray the people who it resonates with in the first place. The 70s? I think he means the 50s. Yeah, I mean you're living in you're living in a dream world, man. Yeah, you can have enrichment, or you can have lower home prices and less traffic. Well, yeah, but he said 50 years ago. Okay, yeah, I'll take that. Second one, please. But what solutions are we offered? Even from the based in trad right, uh, I'm seeing a lot of 32 year old women telling the boys that they just need to man up and put a baby in me. I know I went through a phase, okay? I just I didn't know any better. I was taken advantage of by degenerate. Uh, you post baking sour early for God and speak against my oh, Men, no. but now I'm, I'm, I'm saved by the grace of Christ and I'm ready to settle down with a good man who doesn't smoke or drink or play video games or gamble. That all, by the way, just means you can't hang out with your friends. I don't know if you've learned that lesson yet, but that's what that means. You get to stay at home with her and cuddle. Dude, he is such a fucking dork. No girls like him. None of the boys like him. He can't. He's just... <laughs> He's just in shambles, dude. It's tough. <laughs> and he wants to marry me. Wow, that sounds really great. I'm really, I'm so happy for you. God bless you. And then you just slowly back away. It's like you're spelunking. You find an old stick of dynamite or something. You just slowly back away. It's going to take a little bit more than that. The answer to restoring families is not just telling people to pull themselves up by their bootstraps. You have to understand the psychology of the average person. That's what we're working with. That's what we're looking to correct. <laughs> yeah, John understands the psychology of the average normal person. As an average normal person. John is a knower of them. And we have to be very specific with what the word family means, because otherwise you've got guys working for conservative media outlets talking about my personal news. Bro, that is not your child. Hell yeah, brother. That's pro-humanity. Two strong conservative fathers in a conservative household that will vote Republican. You know, there have been several cases of these people now working for conservative media companies, right-wing media companies, organizations, whatever. And then there's God knows how many of these stories happening behind the scenes because these companies employ lots of these types of people who aren't necessarily public figures. They just work behind the scenes in different capacities. Uh, so I just want to spell out very clearly what that means and why this is so sinister. When this happens, you as a right-wing media company are facilitating a transfer of dollars from your audience, who is ostensibly well-meaning, Christian, patriotic audience. You're facilitating a transfer of dollars from their pockets into the pockets of men who purchase children. <laughs> uh, based? I'm in. I'm into that. Uh, I'm fine. Uh, anything to take money from the uh, right wing grifters, dude. The church, right? Yeah. They're Christian men, so they're good. That's what that is. That's what's actually taking place. The money that they spend in purchasing those children and taking them away from their mothers, those dollars were earned by hardworking, normal, likely Christian American families. And then they gave you those dollars, they gave that to your company because they like the work you're doing, they like to think that you're representing their voice, and you take those dollars, you skim a little off the top for yourself, and you give the rest to an open homosexual who takes those dollars. An open homosexual. Fucking, wow, this is so scathing. I can't put any homo open homosexuals in chat? Very spooky stuff. I hope we don't have any open homosexuals. Only closed homosexuals, please. ...pins out a woman's womb and keeps the child for himself and another man. That's actually what's happening here. It's actually worse than surrogacy in itself because it's surrogacy that was paid for by the labor of well-meaning American patriots. You're the middleman. Money was taken out of their households and it was put into a household that would take children away from other households or plan to or use their platform to promote and normalize a lifestyle which quite often includes that. Like, that is what is happening here. That's why it's so repulsive because these companies are behaving in a way that is a complete betrayal of people who support them. And then they celebrate the announcement. What a slap in the face. Moreover, what do you think the cost benefit looks like with having these LGBT conservative influencers? Who's winning right now? How many LGBT people were really just not getting it? And then they saw a gay guy say that like a flat tax is probably a good idea. Until a gay person gave them permission to like what, vote Republican? People that will only vote for us if we expressly validate their identities, these are the people we want, these are the real movers and shakers. Take that versus what it does to normalize these identities and these behaviors and these lifestyles on the right. If you could- Please adopt John Doyle's politics. Like, God, imagine how many elections they'd lose. This is so deeply off-putting, man. <laughs> he's like, I, I don't want to be in coalition with the gays, which is, I mean, he's at least passing the purity test of the right-wing fascist, you know what I mean? He's for real. He's a, he's the, he's a real deal uh, loser, man. You can quantify that. How many people do you think woke up on the issues because of one of these characters versus people on our side being hypnotized into thinking, well, I guess it doesn't really matter because they see so many of these people who, yeah, they vote Republican. And the worst part, honestly, they're not even good on the issues. If it were like, okay, look, 
the guy is intelligent. He's good on the issues. He just happens to be, you know, what are you going to do? Pray for the guy. That would be one thing. But they're all neocons. They're all conservatarians. They're all liberals who are just like vaguely annoyed with leftism. They're not even annoyed with anything left wing. It's like when you wanted, you know, pepper at a restaurant and then it's like, okay, well, that's too much pepper. You're like, well, I didn't want that much pepper. So I don't really care for this amount of it. They suck on the issues. It's the same ideas. Is that a good metaphor? <laughs> this, this needed uh, a polish. I can't believe he waited months to put this shit out. We're all weary from this, but Jake's the only one here amongst us who has truly watched this entire video. You're goddamn right I have. This for the last 20 years, and then when they repackage that into their version of it, they just repeat that for the last however many years. It sucks, but it makes people feel less mean. Ha! Bet you won't call me a bigot now. Really, I would rather, honestly, I would rather just win. I don't really care what communists think of me. I don't know why you do, but great. Okay, we're attracting people who suck on the issues. I'm sure that'll help us. I'd rather, I'd rather just win. I don't care what communists think of me. <laughs> Dude. He is so lucky. He is one of these other guys who are very lucky that communists are not the uh, psychos that um, they're pretending everyone is. Like, imagine if we actually had revolutionary fucking communists. This guy would, his videos would suddenly just stop uploading one day and you'd be like, well, what happened to John Doyle? Oh, the commies got him. A serious movement, an organized movement with a serious volume of discourse surrounding it. Where's uh -huh. the appeal? Who's winning right now? We are such losers. You want to know how bad it is? We have lost so much ground that we can't even conserve the quality of our gay conservatives anymore. Remember Milo Yiannopoulos? Good on the issues. Legitimately intelligent guy. Very well-spoken, talented. <laughs> Legitimately. <laughs> Legitimately intelligent Milo Yiannopoulos. Never mind. I take back what I said about John. Uh, maybe he is just fucking stupid. Writer and presenter gave a college speaking tour with a title that I don't even think I can say the name of. Now we got a bunch of idiots. They're promoted because it's strategic because of our Big Ten coalition. Look, I get it. I'm all for the Big Ten. I love the Big Ten, but I love it because it attracts more of our people, not stragglers from other tents who want to make a quick buck. There's several million of them. These types of people being promoted to the head of what we're trying to accomplish here does far more to normalize their behavior than it does to recruit. I've met. Are you? Is he opposed to Trump now? A lot of these people. They're very nice people, but we're not here to make friends. We are here to achieve the win conditions, and those do not include the normalization of what was unthinkable to promote as recently as just a few years ago. If you want to live those lifestyles, ultimately that's your decision. But what tends to happen is that if you want to live those lifestyles, ultimately that's your decision. I hope you uh, have a contest. But you're today. you're being against them right now. <laughs> Reblum, you want a laser X Panther? Thank you. Find out there's really no such thing as the private individual acting in the privacy of their own home because wherever these people tend to get involved, whether it's education, media, politics, they can't seem to help themselves but make everything uh, a little different. So, do you want things to be normal again or do you want to be called mean? That's literally the only question that Americans need to ask themselves. The truth is mean. It's harsh. It's not ideal. And the truth about surrogacy is that it's just the logical conclusion of feminism. It's the complete and total and ultimate empowerment of women. We've discussed the differences between men and women and our understandings of those. So allow me to tie that now into a nice bow here to conclude. Let's oh, fucking thank you. We're concluding. Have a fantastic day. We're concluding. Rob Lum. Give one to... Uh... Up Van Root. Go over how down bad the boys are right now. If a woman's only agency is really her sexuality, then why does that stop at having children? Women have been using sex. When I say sex, I mean that very broadly, you know, because uh, as we'll discuss, it's all a scale. It just depends on where they want to personally draw the line. But they all do it, you know, their beauty, their vivaciousness, sometimes even sex itself. All of that has been used by women to benefit themselves since there have been women. I'm not mad about that. That's just what it is. So the reason that they're vivacious, hate children and childbearing isn't because of what they represent in themselves. Maybe there is a component to it that they hate because it recalls the natural order, but it's because of the responsibility that those things impose upon women. If a woman's only agency is her sexuality, why would she draw the line at having children so long as she's not responsible for them? A woman's only agency is not her sexuality, though. Women have agency outside of their sexuality as well. They also have agency over their sexuality. Yeah, they get to choose. I don't know. Why Why is he so upset when everybody else chooses for themselves? What's incoherent about female empowerment and then selling your own child for money? Sounds pretty powerful to me. Being able to create a life for the purpose of selling it or just killing it, that's a lot of power. Of course. It's not your baby. It's not... The surrogate sometimes won't even be their egg, dude. It'll just be their womb. They won't have any DNA fucking involved with it. They're a, they're a matrix pod. For the baby, you know, the one that Neo out of. Of course, it's evil, but it's power. That's why so much of what is classified as empowerment we view to be exploitative and debased. Free the care? nipples. Probably not. Are they still miserable? Probably. Well, they should free the nipples. Yeah. Correct course. 
We see, I mean, we can't trust all of our narrators to be as reliable as us, gentlemen, especially if you, know, if you don't have an internal monologue in a lot of cases. These are just the questions. I don't know. Um, I said this at an event recently. I swear to God, I had a woman come up to me afterwards. There were a dozen guys watching who can confirm this. She was angry with me because I stated the fact that women will dress in certain ways to accentuate certain features because it makes them more attractive to men. And even if they say they do it for themselves or for other women, it's ridiculous because the only reason attractiveness is a relevant concept is because we're sexual beings. They feel more confident because they know men find them more attractive. And they can. Man. It, but if they're not sexual, if they're not. This doesn't make sense, man. <laughs> You're not listening to them when they say that I am not performing this for a man. Feel more attractive than other women, etc. So I said this. She comes up to me. She's all angry. No. She unzips her hoodie and takes it off. She's wearing leggings and a very low cut tank top. I swear to God. She's like, what about this is sexualized? I was, I was like, are you, are you going to make me say it? Like, is this actually? And again, I'm not mad about this. These are just... What about this is sexualized? Norito Chip, thanks for the 100 bitties. You guys do have momentum. It's the way things are. Women objectify themselves every day. It's just a question for them on where they want to draw the line. They dress a certain way. They wear a certain style of makeup. They take endless photos of themselves, but then they'll get angry with other women. Why are we here? We're, this is... How we get men buying babies together, and now we're just in misogyny. We just hate everybody involved. In women for being immodest because her attempts to draw attention to herself, into her beauty, into her features are like what? Too obvious? Something like that? Maybe 10% more extreme? 20% more extreme? Whoa, easy. It's the same behavior, just at different scales. It's like a guy selling lemonade. You know, he's mad at the guy across the street for selling lemonade at a lower price. It's like, guys are both selling lemonade. I don't know. What do you want from me? So I'm just being honest here. And again, you, can, can't, you can't really get mad, you know? It's like, this is just women, all right? If you're getting mad at them, you've already lost. It's a skill issue. Well, no, John, you don't get it. These poor women, they've been brainwashed into thinking this is good for them. Are we sure? Are we sure about that? We're ignoring that there are at least two premises within that which are completely irrational. Let us consider the alternative hypothesis, which has held true for thousands of years, which is that the only thing that can really cultivate what we would regard to be modesty in women is a patriarchal, religious, and especially Christian society. <laughs> Religion's the problem. It keeps being the problem. Why won't you listen to me, dude? It's the problem. I agree. <laughs> I agree. Thank you, John. Can you make that point for me one more time? Premises within that which are completely irrational. Let us consider the alternative hypothesis, which has held true for thousands of years, which is that the only thing that can really cultivate what we would regard to be modesty in women is a patriarchal, religious, and especially Christian society. When that goes away, things are always going to tend to head in this direction. And I'm I agree. Counter signaling modesty, by the way. I probably shouldn't pause it there just in case. Uh, it was body art, though. Uh, yeah, I, I 100 percent agree, John. <clears throat> Thank you. What a great clip. Perfect. I I agree with John Doyle, which is why I am opposed uh, to religious patriarchal uh, societies. <laughs> I'm not counter signaling traditional sexual morality. I'm just observing that the reason that so much of the discourse surrounding these things is off the mark is because it's being led by women who are perfectly happy to participate in True. Types of things and they find God, they make a Twitter account in their 30s, and then they shame the more attractive younger women for doing the same thing that they themselves were happy to do back then. And then I'm the villain for accurately describing their behavior. It's crazy. And people won't be oppressed if we don't oppress them? Fascinating. Dude, he's he's literally confirming the leftist accusations. John Doyle is trying to argue for conservatism by validating every argument that leftists make and saying, yeah, they're right, but God's real, therefore, I'm right. If God not real to John Doyle, if he has a crisis of faith, his politics must change inherently. Actually ridiculous, man. It's always the problem. People are going to get mad about this one. So be it. This was a big red pill for me. Do you ever think about why prostitution is still illegal? Is that just like the one hill that we're really good at holding for some reason? Hey, I mean, good for us. You know, I don't want to lose that hill. But of all the things that they're pushing on young men, marijuana, pornography, hedonism, displacement, sedation, humiliation, why have they not moved in on prostitution? Isn't that weird? Like, do we actually have some political power? We're just focusing all of it on that? Is there some secret lobby in Vegas working to preserve their monopoly on it? No, it's not the Vegas monopoly. It's because it preserves the female monopoly on sexual access. No, John, it's about human trafficking and STIs and evil. You really buy that? You believe that our- It preserves, <laughs> it preserves the female monopoly? Are you kidding me? If, if prostitution was a thing, there would be several women billionaires. If prostitution was legal, there would be, uh, uh, under capitalism, uh, several sex conglomerate corporations, and it would get bad, too. That would get bad as well. Um, it's <laughs> there, would be, there would be corporatized, uh, uh, it'd be a, a billion dollar uh, fucking thing. Oh, man. I would definitely want to get in on on the co-op aspect of that. 
Male sex workers are also affected by prostitution being illegal, John. Yeah. Come corp. A government which does the things that it does and enables the things that it enables and promotes the things that it promotes. You think that it simply decided to just do the right thing when it comes to prostitution? They got that one thing right? The reason prostitution is illegal, even though the left thinks it's empowering and they celebrate it, the reason that power in this country hasn't caught up to that and why it's illegal is because of feminism. It's because it preserves the female monopoly on sex and it gives them even more power over men. Think about it. No, it's because we haven't had leftist control of the government at any point. I would decriminalize and legalize sex work overnight. How to be how to being legal, Jane? I don't know. About it. Go back a couple generations. Women weren't making money. Women had all these pressures put on them from their families and from their communities to get married young, whereas men were making money. They had pressure on them to get married too, sure, but not nearly like the pressures put on young women. It was a lot easier for men, average men, young men, to find a wife, to find a woman, and a lot of that was motivated by the male sexual impulse. Men have always been horny. So the question is, where is that impulse being channeled? Is it being channeled into something good, something productive? Women are horny too, John. You just have to be, you have to make them turned on. You know, you have to be sexy. <laughs> Sorry, you can't do it. He's like, women used to be more desperate. Why can't I get any bitches? This is why, John. Or is it just being wasted, just flushed down the drain because of screen whores? If men could go pay a hundred bucks and have sex with a hooker, you know, it's disgusting. You don't know where that's been, how many diseases she has, what's going on there. But at least that's a real experience. At least you're in control of that situation. You have the power in that situation. It doesn't make it right. It doesn't make that a good idea. But at least you're in control of that. Maybe you're a slave to your desires. To get yourself into a situation like that, you probably have to be. But if you're already a slave to your desires, what's going to keep you in those shackles? Is it being assaulted 24 hours a day by pornography and e-girls, putting women on this pedestal? Or is it going to have sex with a hooker and being like, eh, that's the problem. We've elevated women to such a pedestal. <laughs> God, dude. <laughs> I feel like a hand job would change this man's life. <sighs> Bro. <Ugh. sighs> it's almost over, chat. It's almost over. This guy is so stupid. Now we're just on we don't like sex workers now. This has evolved. This rant has evolved into the other stuff he doesn't like. In our everyday lives, men are debasing themselves for women. And I love women. I cherish women. Nobody has more respect for women than me. But in order to create a society that we want to live in, something approximating what we used to have in this country, men have to realize themselves. And they will never do that if they're being tugged along on a leash all day because of women. Because what do men do now for women? They debase themselves. They adopt a viewpoints that aren't even theirs. They allow women to do whatever they want, to speak to them however they will. They're completely whipped, completely domesticated. They don't see their friends. They give. Women do not. <laughs> Who are you talking about, man? He seems butt mad that he doesn't have a girlfriend and anyone else he knows has a partner. And he, he, he like, they all have girlfriends. He doesn't have a girlfriend. He's left out because he's unlikable. Wow. And he, like, earlier was like, I swear to God, earlier, dude, a girly, a girl showed me her boobies in, ta in a tank top. Boobies, dude? Boobies? Man, this has nothing to do with surrogacy. Yeah, it really doesn't. He's just he's just mad at he's just mad at women and sex workers now. Yeah, boobos, boobas. Yeah, yeah, that's right, boobies. I like boobies. I'm not like a little freak about boobies, but I mean, I'll look at, I'll look at your boobies. You know what I mean? I've never seen a pair of boobies that I'm like, you know what? Terrible. That's probably not true. The evils strikes me as a never nude. Yeah, I don't know, man. We're weird about human bodies. Most people, most people are just way too weird about their bodies. And others. What are you a little freak about, Jake? Butts. Give up on their dreams, on their mission. Do you understand how many men adjust their everyday existence based upon access to women? It's weak behavior, and it's maintained by the female monopoly on sexual access. That keeps men domesticated and docile, which is why our society has degraded into what it has, because women have all the power. That doesn't mean they'll be... Women have all the power because John Doyle can't get laid. <laughs> happy doesn't mean they'll even use it properly or understand Amazing. that they have it, but they have it. And if men could just go pay a hundred bucks and get a hooker, that psychology would change. And I'm not saying any of this is good, by the way, but the male sexual impulse is real. It's going to go somewhere. And there's a reason that they're distracting you with a constant assault of screen whores, making consent. Screen whores.
contracts, putting you on dating apps where you have to beg for a message back. It's created a society of good little boys. Good little boys are boys who give their balls to women. And I'm not making an argument in favor of this. I'm simply telling you why it makes perfect sense that with all of the evil things that exist in our society, this is the one thing that's not being promoted. It would be confusing to me if I didn't understand this because I would think, wait a minute, why are they promoting all of this sexual degeneracy but they're still arresting people for prostitution? That's so weird. It's not weird. What is more empowering for women than getting paid to have sex with you? Getting paid not even to have sex with you, but for you to like what jerk off to them by yourself in your room. It's weak behavior. And don't worry, I'm consistent across the board as well. When me and my cool friends take power, we're gonna arrest these people too. But it will be because <laughs> we're gonna arrest these people. If John Doyle ever takes power, it is your it is your American duty uh, to um, remove him from power, <laughs> like immediately. Yeah, man. I mean, I just I I, I really don't think that's gonna happen. Because we're restoring a male-dominated society instead of a female-dominated one. Female-dominated societies will put pornography on every screen and magazine in the country, but will arrest... Men literally did this. A society created for and catered to by men. Like... <laughs> Come on, bro. What are you talking about? We have a male-dominated society right now. Do you and have you find... January 6th style? No. Uh, Bastille Day style. Fired for making the wrong comment about it. Stop objectifying us. That's why we've got surrogacy too. What could be more empowering for women than selling your baby? Sure, but what about purchasing a baby from another woman because you can't have one naturally? Maybe because you waited too long, you wanted to be a girl boss, whatever. That's sovereignty. You can do whatever you want. Don't get married, be a girl boss, but you still get to purchase a baby. It's complete female dominion. But I know people are going to get angry at this. Women can kill their children. They can sell their children. They can buy their children. That's power. Get angry at it. I don't care. That's power. And you, like a good little boy, say, well, it's not fair to women, really. It's about the exploitation of women. Was I good, mommy? Because the conservative movement in this country is run by women, homosexuals, and worst of all, perhaps, men who are controlled by women, by their wives, whatever. So I can say this while love. <laughs> Worse than any, any homosexual is a man controlled by a woman true loving and respecting women which i do because i understand that it is the responsibility of men to build and maintain and restore society but in order for us to do that we have to behave like men be masculine and if what is most masculine by definition is what is least feminine then we have to abandon political correctness and speak about things honestly without having to be held hostage by the emotions of people who may not like our tone which is what i have just done i don't blame women i don't hold women responsible really he's just done it excellent arguments john We must do the masculine things. John, of course, professional masculinity, man. Very masculine, that John. He was able to eke out a beard, and he's like, I'm masculine now. I'm a big mask guy. All right, man. It's our job, but that starts with abandoning this weak, simp mindset. The simp. It's, it starts with abandoning a weak mind, a, a simpy mind. You can't say. You have to be more manly. You just have to be. You. Uh, you need to be a big, burly man if you're going to give me alpha shit. And then even then, you're just a really big, stupid boy. But, like, you have to at least walk the walk, and you do not. You got to keep lifting more heavies. More creatine in the morning, brother. I did convince him to grow that beard. Did I? Did I tell him to grow a beard? Mind virus, as it were. So we can actually protect our children and restore our country. Hey, guys, if you like... Okay, it's over. Um... We did it! We got through the John Doyle fuck box. That was absolutely terrible. He repeated himself before. That, that could have been about a 20 minute video. And he did not back it up with any sort of statistics. His videos have gotten worse, more ranty and unhinged, and now he's just, he's literally just mad that he cannot be in fascist control of America. And then he, he LARPs about it. He's just, he just like, He's just like, well, when me and my friends take over, you're, hey, buddy, you're going to be, you're going to be real sorry. All right, John. I don't think so. I think we'll be fine.